Look, strength isn't just your muscles contracting. Strength is also a skill. What does that mean? The more you can practice and exercise, the better you can get at your biomechanics and your control, the stronger you're gonna be. Now, what does that mean? That means you'll get more out of the exercise. So the skill of the lift is just as important as the size of your muscle fibers or how hard your muscles can contract. This one, strength athletes know very well. Yeah, oh, we, yeah. I, it's a, we have a great example when we look at, when we compare like a, <clears throat> say like a bodybuilder's physique to like an Olympic lifter's physique. Like there's, there's a perfect example of like, you've got these Olympic lifters that look like they're half the human that some of these bodybuilders are, yet they have the capability to lift sometimes two times more than what they are. Do you know, are you familiar with any studies that actually break down the the math behind that? Like, uh, uh, you know, technique and central nervous system and form and practicing is, is represents what percentage of strength versus just overall volume and size of, of muscle fibers? You like, know, do you know what the ratio is? I know we could, we could speculate. That's a really good question. Issue, yeah. I would use power lifters as a better example, not because Olympic lifters don't have skill. They have tremendous skill in what they're doing. Uh, but because the lifts are so explosive Super and it dynamic, lacks the yeah. eccentric, right? It lacks the like lowering of the weight. Olympic lifters are not going to get as much hypertrophy as let's say a power lifter. Now, power lifters... They lift more like bodybuilders than Olympic lifters do. Now, are power lifters not muscular? No, they're very muscular. Oh, I think I think that Olympic lifters are a better example of your analogy you're giving, though. You don't? You think power lifters is a better example? Just to compare to bodybuilders, because bodybuilders bench, deadlift, and squat. Bodybuilders don't clean and snatch, and they don't drop the weight. They typically lower the weight with control, whereas power lifters lower it with control. So when you want to look at like the hypertrophy differences, the muscle growth differences... I think it's a little better. Like a, like a, a power lifter can squat a tremendous amount of weight. It typically has big thighs as well. But power lifters focus a lot on technique. Everything is about the perfect positioning of the bar. You'll watch them place their feet a certain way. They go down slowly to stay perfectly in alignment so they can exert the force in the right direction. Whereas, you know, bodybuilders more are... By the way, bodybuilders, you know, people get, get, get this misconstrued. They're also very fo focused on technique. Now, their technique focus is more about the feel of the muscle versus moving the weight. Yeah, they'd rather they'd rather feel the muscle burn and fatigue yes. and get a pump over leveraging the most amount of weight. Yes, yes, weight. yes. But like, okay, so like there was a study recently that um, you know uh, just came out. Lane Norton actually covered it. I think I talked a little bit about this on a previous podcast. But they compared lifters who trained at sub. Uh, intensity level. So they didn't train to failure, but they practiced the exercises a bit more often versus another group that trained at very high intensities. And the group that didn't go to failure built more muscle. Now, to be clear, there's studies that show that intensity will build more muscle than what I just said. So there's all these contradicting studies and we can get into why. But the reason I think those people built more muscle is because practicing technique is better when you're not training at super high intensities. Like the second you go super hard, your technique goes out the window. You're mm -hmm. fatigued. So like you'll see this with power lifters. They rarely will train with their max. They'll train at sub max levels and you'll watch them like try to really perfect the technique and skill of the lift. Now for the average person, this matters because the better you can do a squat, the more you'll get out of it, right? The yeah. better you could bench, that becomes the more you'll your get default. Out of it. Yes. It, it's, it's the hard wiring sort of process to that. And that's why, you know, technique does matter so much, uh, you know, regardless of what you're doing. Even if you go through a stint of it, just to get your body to um, use that is like it's 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 operating system. This is how we, we move the weight. This is how we perform the exercise. So it's not when you're under a state of fatigue, you're not just reverting to by any means necessary posturally to, to be able to muscle it up. There's a bit of a caveat to that, though, because when I do an exercise like a bench press, squat is like this, even deadlift to an extent is like this, um, I need enough weight that it helps me have to focus on bracing all over yeah. that it's like so like when i warm up for a squat yeah i, ju I just doing the bar is a waste of time almost mm -hmm. because it's such lightweight that I, I it doesn't force me to intrinsically 
brace my core right. and be rigid right, right, and, right. and and so it just feels flimsy when you're warming up so there is like a you want to have enough intensity that it, it forces you to to brace really well, stay rigid, stay tight, but not so much weight that it fatigues the muscle and, and you didn't get good, pra get good practice from it, right? No, I understand 100%. Yeah. And it, again, if we go back uh, to studies on strength training, you can find studies that show that low reps build more muscle than high reps, and you'll find other studies that show high reps builds more muscle. You'll find some that show multiple sets does better than single sets. Then you'll find other studies that show single sets to failure do better. You'll see time under tension, but it works better. But then you'll see like, you know, uh, uh, studies that show that explosive movements or faster pace builds. And so it's like all these contradicting studies. Yeah. The point I want to make with this is all the, there isn't a single strength training controlled study that's three years long mm -hmm. or even a year long. They're all. 12 weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks at most. And the body adapts very quickly. All these things have value. So like for the average person listening, I think it's important that you go and you train to just feel the muscle. But I also think it's important you go and practice the exercise itself and master the skill. It all mm -hmm. has value yeah. unless you plan on working out for 12 weeks and then stopping. Right. But if you want to keep going and keep progressing, that's why these debates over studies. It just sounds like you talk in circles because it's Dude. like there's so many methods that have value. And I mean, it gets frustrating because it's um, dogmatic on one end versus the other. And, and, you know, people are trying to pull you into their camp. And it's like, look, there's value to this because obviously it's going to build muscle. You know, if I'm focused on hypertrophy, you visibly see that. Uh, you know, if I'm just working on my central nervous system, I'm going to build strength, which in fact also builds muscle uh and it's there's so many methods in between acute variables you can mess and, and tweak with and so it just becomes this like uh what are we doing like are we just gonna sit here and debate like <laughs> all Every, these like everything valid methods? And nothing works at the same time yeah yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah you just have to <laughs> rotate them around now it's all within reason right because yeah. there's things outside the realm of what's what's gonna help but like it would be like you know and this is much more clear but it would be like a study showing like hey if you improve airflow on an engine it gets more horsepower. And then someone else is like, well, actually, if you change the gear ratios, yeah. that makes it go faster. And then this right. other person's like, well, you know, if you make just the engine yeah. bigger, yeah, yeah. If you just have you yeah, the right more time. Cubic everybody inches. competing, right? And when everybody needs to say, like, actually, this all works together. Yeah. And there's a way to piece this all together, which is the most uh, important thing. Well, like, and then, okay, a great analogy, because then there's the other thing, too, that has to be factored in is, like, what is going to give you the greatest bag for your buck? Yes. Because then there's the other part of what we do in our space, which is yeah. we split hairs over some things that don't matter much. We yeah. tend to get hung up on, oh, this is what really, this is also kind of how I feel. And, and I know I'm going to get some flack for this because I know there's a camp around the intensity thing of like having to go training to failure all the time. Like, because we've had studies that have come out to show the benefits of training to failure that I don't disagree with, they're, they're there, that that is something that you should do all the time. And in fact, it's like, yeah, there's tremendous value for building muscle with utilizing a tool like training to failure. But more often than not, if people abuse it. And my analogy staying in the same vein as you are with the car it's like it's like nitrous yeah for your car it's like yes it does give you extra horsepower yes but if you run around fucking blasting that all the time like that you're gonna blow <laughs> or, the engine or you don't have a good suspension or yes or, they you can't know, handle like, that you can't handle it exactly you're just gonna spin in the dirt so it's literally like it training to failure is nitrous for your car it can be used it can be valuable can help you win a race it's gonna give you this if you took a bunch of people that trained traditionally, that never lifted to failure, and you put them on a four-week cycle of cutting their volume down by a, down to a third and going to failure, they will all see rapid results. On the flip side, you take a bunch of people who've been lifting to failure at low volume for a long time, you put them in a four-week study where you increase the volume by three times and drop everybody down three, four reps from failure, you will also see gains in those people. Yeah. That's the thing that we don't see in studies. What we never see in studies, what do they always say? College aged males trained or untrained. That's it. Yeah. You never see college aged males who train and have been training for six months this way. Let's see how they respond now to this. Yeah. If we saw that, I could predict, unless something's like outlandish and crazy, I could predict with really good accuracy whether or not they're going to respond well. Like if you sent me a study and you said, here's 12 college aged males They've all been training like power lifters for the last six months. 
We're going to put them on a bodybuilding style routine. What, what do you think will happen? Or like, we, gonna get great or gains, we great never gains. carry the study out beyond 12 weeks. We do it in 12 weeks yeah. and, and, and basically a meso cycle and that's it. We don't go, what happens when they train this way for a year and, and, and show the graph of, oh, here's the results. And then this is what happened after about four to six <laughs> weeks. And then at the end of the year, here they are again. It's like that we don't show it that far. We, we use a study to prove a point that, oh, this way of training or this modality or this thing is valuable. I'll, I'll use us as an example. We actually had a caller recently um, who called and we have people obviously call in, we answer questions. And this woman had followed MAPS Anabolic and she had cycled through it over and over again for about a year, okay? We have a lot of people who listen to the show who start with MAPS Anabolic who find it to be extremely effective. It blows their mind. And then they make the mistake of repeatedly running it over and over and over again and never moving outside of it, okay? And so she was running into the problems that'll happen when you do that specifically with that program. And there's other problems that'll happen with other programs. But specifically with MAPS Anabolic, it's a very... The, the movements are bilateral. You're working primarily in one plane of movement. And if you follow this program over, because what will happen is you'll follow it. If you don't work out that way, you're going to be like, oh my God, this is the craziest thing. I'm getting all these amazing gains. This is all the reports we get. And then you do it over and over again. Here's what happens. You start to hurt. You start to get tight. Yeah. You mm -hmm. start to notice joint pain. The gains slow down. The gains not only slow down, they start to go backwards because my hip hurts. My knee hurts. Like what's going on? Because no program is perfect. You're strong, but you're out of balance. There's, yes, no program is perfect. You have to move into something else if you want to continue this progress. So when these studies come out, and I fell for this, man, all the time. A study would come out, I'd be like, that's the new way I got to train. Mm -hmm. Then I'd do it, and I'd be convinced because for the next three, four weeks, gains would explode on my body. And then I'd be like, what's going on? It stopped again. I'd have to find the next study. Oh, it's that one. That's the way to do it. And it's just, no, it doesn't work that way. The yeah. body... Respond. By the way, even what I'm saying now is going to mess up a lot of people because I know there's people listening who are like, oh, it's novelty. Change everything all the time. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. that's wrong too. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, muscle confusion. No, no, no. Uh, you got to stick to something long enough to start to reap its benefits and maximize what it does before you switch over. Changing everything all the time is also not the answer. Today's YouTube giveaway is the RGB bundle. That's three workout programs in one bundle. You can get it for free, but you have to enter to win. If you want to do this, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you do all those things that enters you to win. Also, we got a program sale going on right now. We put together four workout program bundles and we discounted them 300 to $350 off. That means they're very, very low priced. So check this out. We have the new to weightlifting bundle, the body transformation bundle, the new year extreme intensity bundle and the body transformation bundle 2.0. If you're interested in any of them, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of reaping benefits, so I saw when I was when I was a kid, one of my favorite supplements to use was uh, No Explode. Which, <laughs> oh, I, I forgot about that. BSN one. was the brand that made it, and uh, I just I, I used I, Super Pump. It was like I believe, if I remember correctly, it, it was a vasodilator. Plus, it had caffeine in yeah, there mm -hmm, too, yeah. and so I you felt the energy from the caffeine. You felt the pump from all the nitric oxide stuff that it had yeah. going on in there. It just it was a product that I one of the most like you know consistently used product I ever used as a kid, and I liked it. Right. Um, I saw that Legion, our buddy Mike, sent over a product that looks like something similar to that. I didn't get a chance to try it, and I didn't get a chance to even look at everything that's in it. I saw you took one. Did you get a chance to try it? And what what is in it in comparison to something like a okay, product? Okay, so pre-workout, when they first started that whole market, the reason why they got so popular, there's two reasons. One, the marketing around some of the first pre-workouts was brilliant. Uh, Super Pump 2, I think it was 250 or Super Pump it was called by Gaspari. It was one of the first ones to use this brilliant, it's just, and we had Gaspari on the show a long time ago and I told mm -hmm. him, brilliant marketing. And literally what it was, and I remember the mag, the magazines, is it would show a dude with his shirt off who's yeah. kind of jacked before and after his workout. So you could see the pump. And the, I mean, look, if I get pumped, I look like I gained 15 pounds of muscle, right? If you have some muscle and you get a pump and you're well hydrated, it looks dramatic. But it was such an effective ad because you look at it and you're like, I want to do that. And everybody likes the feeling of a pump. And what they had in them was a lot of caffeine and arginine. Arginine is an amino acid. It's a precursor 
or a building block to something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a very quickly released gas that dilates the blood vessel. So literally what it does is it relaxes. So think of your blood vessels as either being like constricted, like when you're stressed out and stuff like that, or like totally relaxed. When they're totally relaxed, there's more blood flow. So the theory is, well, more blood flow, you're going to get a better pump. Now we know that arginine does something, but citrulline is probably more effective. There's other compounds out there that give you more blood flow. And the majority of the reason why pump, uh, like pre-workout supplements are so popular has less to do with the pump ingredients and more to do with the stimulant. Like it, the, the most popular ones tend to have the best combinations of stimulants because that's really what you what you tend to feel, okay? Mm -hmm. The problem with that is if you want to take a supplement that does have some effects on blood flow, you're kind of limited because everything's got 200 to 300, sometimes 400 or more milligrams of caffeine. So you're like, what do I, yeah, like what do I opposite. take? Yeah, I mean, I want to take something that give me a better pump, but it does, I don't want to take all these stimulants. Anyway, long story short, there are compounds out there that do effectively raise nitric oxide to the point where some of them are being recommended now to people to take to lower blood pressure. So there are now medical journal studies mm. that show there are certain compounds that you can take that will show a measurable reduction in blood pressure because of the vasodilating effect. Wasn't that like the Viagra story? Viagra is a PDE5 inhibitor, very strong at, at increasing nitric. Yes. Yeah. That raises that because PDE5 destroys nitric oxide. So when you inhibit that, you get more nitric oxide and you get a crazy, crazy blood flow. Boner. So you get a boner. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, if you want to take something that's going to give you the best blood flow for a pump, then yeah, Viagra would be. Yeah. Like I was say, nothing Vi would beat that. A little Viagra and caffeine. Let's yeah. go. So let's talk about that for a second. Does increasing blood flow through the use of things that help increase nitric oxide contribute to better performance and better gains? There's studies that, that show that maybe, probably. There's nothing like conclusive, right? So there's no mm. study that's like, oh yeah, you do this, you're going to get these big gains. What you tend to see is the subjects got like a couple more reps or they weren't as sore. Muscle damage seems to be a little bit better the perceived, um, you know, the perceived experience of the workout seemed to be a little bit better for some reason at altitude, it makes a big difference. So, and they did this with Viagra, they gave athletes Viagra and it didn't show a difference, but if they were at altitude, it showed hmm. a difference, which kind of makes sense. Cause you know, you need the red blood cells at altitude. You need more of them, you know, type of deal anyway. So long story short, what Legion does, and this is what I like about Mike so much. He doesn't, play the hype game. Like there's a lot of hype around stuff yeah. and people will jump on all these different he'll, ingredients. He'll cherry pick the things that have got the studies behind That's it to it. support. Yeah. He doesn't put a bunch of fluff in things. None of his supplements are like that. Yeah. So you'll see like this latest, everybody's talking about this thing and he'll be like, I don't see anything supporting it. I'm not going to waste my time on it. So all of his supplements are like, yeah, L like legit. He always highlights that. the efficacious dose, not nothing like exceeding that. Really. Yeah, not it, not just that, but he doesn't put like because a lot of supplements will do this. They'll put a lot of everything in there, not yeah. not a lot, a little bit of everything. Yeah. So you read the ingredients, and list. it's always stuff that like is new that people heard that oh this might be working for this, or that, and he'll, the, the people will rush to catch the wave. That's right. People interested in it, throw it all in a supplement. Forget does it work well together. Forget is that a good enough dose for that. The, Forget if it's even been proven yet. Where Mike will wait and go like, okay, there's enough research supporting the positive benefits of that. That's going in there. Or they'll do what's called pixie dust thing. So there were two supplements I remember specifically that did this very well. There was a supplement called Blue Thunder. Do you guys remember Blue Thunder, the drink <laughs> behind the counter? Yes, I okay. remember that. So, Good yeah. Yeah, no. ABB made it, right? Yes. Yeah. Blue Thunder, when you turned it around, first of all, it had a lot of caffeine in it. Yeah, okay, so that's like the main reason. It had a bunch of shit. Oh, it had everything. <laughs> yeah. It had all the stuff I read about. Yeah. Now, reality, it had like like a tiny bit in there. Yeah, like, yeah. You know. And in liquid forms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a thunder right from out. Out. But I remember reading the back of it being like, oh my God, this has everything that I've ever read about. This yeah. must be amazing. So that, 
There was another supplement called Hot Stuff. Do you guys remember Hot Stuff? I don't remember Hot Stuff. I've heard you talk about it before. Bro, so there was a whole, one. you guys want to hear something funny? Was it, was it just niacin? No, no, <laughs> no. Hot Stuff. <laughs> the ori- there's this rumor about, about Hot Stuff that the original formula contained some anabolic steroids in it. Oh, wow. Uh, that, so it was like sold. It wasn't like widely. Uh, so almost like it's it's illegal, almost. Right? Yeah. Like it's, it's, you got the Hot Stuff. No, everybody's like, oh, you take the original formula Hot Stuff, you built hella muscle. And then it got popular and apparently they changed the formula this is the mm. wonderful rumors of the muscle building world yeah. but anyway that was another supplement you read the back the ingredients and it was like 85 different things like wow this has ginseng wow this has smilax wow that has everything i've ever read about right <laughs> pixie dusting mike doesn't do that so here's what he put in this new supplement and this new supplement is not it, it is not stimulant based it is literally this will improve the pump the pump and give you better performance minus stimulant so what you could do and I've tried it. I tried it. What I did is I took this along with my normal caffeine supplement. So I add the stimulant to it and give it a shot. Here's what it has in it. So it's 2,000 milligrams of taurine. Taurine, we know, uh, does improve muscular power and endurance, probably through improving the production of dopamine in the brain. It also has something called nitro, uh, nitrosagene. I think I'm pronouncing that right. This particular product. This is an inositol stabilized arginine silicate. It's a type of arginine that doesn't get dis- degraded so easily in the gut. So it gets converted to nitric oxide. Oh, that's interesting. Fi- because we figured rate. out a while back that arginine was a better. Ab- that's that citrulline was. Oh, because citrulline. arginine will get degraded. Oh, that's what it is. So like you take 3000 milligrams of it, chunk of it, most of it will get degraded. The studies on arginine used uh, uh, injection. So it didn't really translate into the real world because uh, no, nobody's injecting arginine. Yeah. Well, anyway, this is a type of arginine that is stabilized through with something called inositol, and it does get converted to nitric oxide. So you'll see in studies more blood flow from this. It also has something called hesperidine, which is good for blood flow, muscular endurance power, and then grapeseed extract. This one I've known about for a long time that increases so that increases blood flow. So it's a Pretty awesome product. And I like it, especially for people who don't want stimulant or they want to drink coffee and they don't want to pre-workout because it's already got caffeine. Right, so they, right. they want to control it. their stimulant, mm-hmm. right? They can add it to their to their stuff. It also, the way that I would use this is if you have, let's say you have Pulse, as other pre-workout with caffeine in it. And you're like, what do I do with this? I'm already using Pulse. Use this a different time during the day. So you could take this not pre-workout on an empty stomach and you're just going to improve blood flow. Improving blood through with nitric oxide is is healthy for you. And, I, and well, how do I know this? The studies on the most powerful nitric oxide boosters in the world, Viagra, show improvements in health. Yeah, so what, reduced what, heart attack. Wasn't, wasn't Viagra originally earmarked for something else, wasn't it? For blood pressure. Blood pressure yeah. yeah. So it wasn't even, so that, that was why they were targeting that in the no, first place. No, people came back from the study and they're like, well, there's a little, yeah, there's some, seems to be a lower <laughs> blood pressure. Any side on effects? It. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, well, I've heard snake bonus. venom too. It was like, uh, they're using that for blood pressure. Oh, isn't there a type of venom, a venom where the side effect of it is you get like an uncontrollable erection and then you die? I'm almost what? Positive, Doug. Look it up. What? I just look know, up snake one of my venom clients erection. was messing with it because really? the beta yeah. blockers weren't doing him so well. And what he, an embarrassing he tried way snake to die. Venom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're with your friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what's, ah. what's wrong with John? Oh, he's playing, bro. Well, he's, yeah, he's just yeah. messing with us. Yeah, he's, he's messing with us, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. Obviously, he's happy right now. You know? Yeah. He seems to be fine. Yeah. Dude, speaking of uh, why Doug's <laughs> looking that up to prove your, prove that's true or not, uh, yeah. you guys have to watch. I watched, by the way, I watched Justin, your uh, sci fi movie. Yeah. I loved it. Okay. What do you think? Yeah? It was good. It, w- it was very good. It was good. I wouldn't quite put it on Machia. Uh, what was it? What's well, the. Well, Ex Machia. Well, that's a different. Yeah, that yeah. was like. That, that was really. Ex Machina I, I, was I'm another. actually upset I used that as a reference. It was it's good. A different. Hey, I'm glad you did because it got me to watch it. Katrina watched it, and actually getting Katrina to watch a sci fi is like so oh, tough. Yeah, impossible. And she watched it, and she agreed it was it was a better one. You, what I really enjoyed about it, and I think you kind of highlighted this part of it, was that it it most of the uh, you know AI into the world you know sci fi movies is just the, the robots or killing all of us. Yeah. To, it was the other side. Like they were the ones that were, you just yeah. wanted sovereignty, right? They were yeah. like, I just want to survive. Leave us, leave, leave us alone. And the humans were like trying to abolish them. And that was kind of a cool twist 
to it and very believable uh, like you said a lot of the technology totally. and how they use it it was it was well done i would uh i would imagine in a real world where ai which obviously would be far more intelligent than us if ai really did exist and told us hey we just want to be left alone yeah just let us be over here i don't think we would if we knew that there was a super like way more intelligent species of something mm -hmm. that lived on the same planet there's no way human fear would allow us to let them live we'd be like we got to figure well out. i mean katrina asked yeah. this question she's like you know and it's it, i could see both that's why it was this this it was done so well that you could see both sides and i feel like i can argue both cases right they also the without ruining the whole thing like the you know ai is it was trying to create something to protect itself yeah right but in in the same token it's going to have to destroy something that we've created that yeah. is put in place to protect us and so if we knew ai was creating something like that yeah uh, and they're yeah, the, it's a like super weapon yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and they're not so human. alarming I don't for give humans a, but yeah. also so yeah. you're right their fear would would drive them so why don't you think it got uh i saw it only got like a 64 rating or whatever like that what i don't do you, know that's why i wanted to bring it up and no one talked about yeah, it i was like dude this is such crap like uh, this is a great movie and i wonder how many movies like that are out there that just get like these terrible reviews and you're just like what this movie should have got way more attention and highlighted yeah what does that say doug it, it is huh well it's a spider that causes the erections oh yeah oh. so it's the banana oh. spider in brazil <laughs> well, banana spider yeah, yeah, which makes a lot of sense <laughs> yeah yeah uh so yeah one of the most deadly spiders in the world is the banana spider but they say they could potentially use that as a uh Erectile dysfunction medication. So dude gets bit by it. And he's like with his wife and he's dying. He's like, honey, one last time. <laughs> what? <laughs> Before I die. That's use this. Fu that's funny. Wow. Yeah, so that was good. Um, I wanted to bring up, uh, um, um, ooh, is that what it looks like? Yes. Disgusting. Ooh, that's <laughs> creepy. Spiders creep I'd me out, dude. I, I, What are you more afraid of, snakes or spiders? Dude. Spiders. Yeah, spiders yeah, all day. Big time, snakes right? don't, yeah. yeah snakes. I lived with snakes and I mean, I didn't like it, but. And I feel like you could see them coming. Like the the bigger the snake, the scarier it looks. Like a little tiny little snake, like this isn't even yeah. you know a gardener snake or whatever. Like that. That's not even scary at all. A big snake is kind of scary, but then he's big enough that you see see it and you see it coming and you probably you, hear it. I've, Spiders. Have you seen the ew. video? Creep of, up a spider will come up on your shoulder and you're not even oh, know. Stop it. it. Listen, <laughs> have you guys seen the video? There's I think it's got to be in Australia because they have all the weird shit. There, there was a spider, like one of those massive ones. Yeah, and it was on someone's wall and carrying they, a rat. No, no, no. It was just on the wall, and the dude shot it <laughs> to kill it. He shot a hole in the wall. He shot, oh, no. shot yeah. it. Was good. Somebody <laughs> sent in from Australia when we were talking the last time we that. talked about this, they had sent in a clip of one carrying a rat up yeah, the wall. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, that that's scary as shit. So how, would you, how do you get Ugh. rid of a spider that big? It was like this big. What do you do? I don't want to smash it. What do I no, do? No, you shovel, If you bro. smash it, you it's going to stay alive, dude. Yeah, you got to shovel know? that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you be able to just blast it with a shovel? Yeah. You would? Yeah. yeah. I might, I might yeah. pull the gun out, dude. I mean. <laughs> you, uh, you, you, just it would blast a hole in his house to kill it. Oh. You can repair holes, dude. That's all oh, I'm saying. You imagine you miss and yeah. it falls on the floor. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, spiders. Kids, sure. get out. Hey, so yeah. I watched something that you guys got to watch uh, now. So it's on Netflix. It's called BitCon. Oh, I saw that. I haven't watched it. So it. the story, without ruining this, the whole story or whatever like that, uh, it was, it's based on the biggest case that the SEC filed mm -hmm. on all the crypto coins that were the all that hype that happened oh, right. in the last two years or whatever, three years it's been. I don't know, four years even now. It's been a while. Uh -huh. Um that and they were it was the first big case. And you get to hear from the the FBI and SEC, like they were they were waiting. They were waiting, like they're like, we were were they, they knew it was all this rampant fraud was happening. But they wanted to find a case that was that was big enough they can make an example of, and it was the first big case they made an example of. And the story is crazy. I mean, the whole thing is crazy. How it ends is crazy. The time that the the guys that did it, what they got, what they had to serve. He was facing like 170 years and stuff like that. Wow. So what ended up happening to him? He was a 20 something year old, 20 year old guys that were that were creating this thing. The part that I thought was crazy that it's not really a spoiler like, but the at the end they 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 start putting up like the statistics of like all this yeah. scams so that you know what percentage of these coins they say they have they have proven to be scams that they say what percentage are what oh no like 78 percent what wow. are you serious wow that's not 
nuts. Wow. That's nuts. That's that's terrible. It, that's wild to think that there's that much grifters that are out there right now. And, and you that know what's whole crazy to me about this kind of stuff? I mean, enrages the shit out of me is that, and I'm not saying it's good that people are creating fake coins and whatever uh, or stealing, you know, with them. But you get a kid like that. He did, a, you know, big scam, right? Hundreds, they're going to charge him and put him in jail potentially for a hundred plus years. Then you get perverts that touch kids mm -hmm. or do, mm -hmm. and they don't go to jail. Yeah. They it's get all in, in the public's face. They don't go to jail at all. Or if they do, no. it's nothing. Yeah. I don't understand that. Where the fuck are our values? Yeah. I don't get that shit. No reckoning. At all. If you counterfeit money, you're fucked, according to our laws. Well, you are screwed. I mean, yeah, we're, we're setting a pretty. You heard precedent. a kid. You heard a kid. You probably you could not. You could get I away mean, with not even going the to jail. Government. The government's the the biggest mafia. The biggest gangsters in the world is the government. And you fuck with their money. That's what I mean. You fuck with somebody else. Uh, that's a slap on the wrist, or well, you know what I'm saying. Like that's in their in yeah. their in their eyes, their world. You fuck with the mafia's money, and so that you're gonna you're gonna yeah. get you're gonna yeah. get it. Yeah. That's the same thing. I mean, well, with it the shows you the disconnect of value. It is. It's it's just the truth. I like, mean, I'm not saying it shouldn't. We be can illegal. we can, we can hurt we can hurt each other all we want, but yeah. we you come after their money or what they 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 believe to be their money. I'm sorry, dude. My values are you hurt a kid. I mean, that's we, the worst. Thing we're all in agree. We're all in agreement on that. But when yeah. we're you know we're ran or our rules are made up. Uh, by <laughs> I know by a governing body, and they decide what those rules are going to look this like, when, and the, and the penalties I, are. They're this gonna, is when I can make the case for like a vigilante, like superhero or something. You know what I mean? Like I'm cool with that. There's a weird guy going around killing, you know, people that hurt kids. Like, oh, that's weird. Yes. Hey, yeah, speaking of that, I did not, awesome I did not have this plan, so I didn't write it down, but I'll look at it. There's a fitness guy, okay, and I just found him recently. I started following him. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm always hesitant to shout somebody out that I don't know a lot about yet, but I'll at least share that I started following and it intrigued me by the, his content. Uh, he is, he's got a kind of Lane Norton esque as far as like the, the going after mm -hmm. people and so that, but he goes after all these fake and fitness influencers that Photoshop their photos oh, and do all wow. these, uh, do all these things. What I thought was really cool, but he, and he also goes after pedophiles and he sets them up. Oh, wow. So, wow. He, How does he mix that in with fitness? I, I, and, <laughs> that seems like a weird combination. I, I, so I don't know enough about him, his history and how that, how that got intertwined, hand hand. Yeah. but he's found, he has found this and, and he, what he does a lot of times is like he, he donates a lot of the money and proceeds as he get to, to helping all this. So it's kind of cool what he does helping kids. And okay. like, so I, I like what I've seen so far. I think his Instagram is goob G O O B or underscore G O B. Maybe, uh, Andrew, someone could look it up. Why, uh, why How we're did talking he go after him? So, well, so the ones that I, well, the Instagram ones are, are the Photoshopping ones are basic, right? Okay, I mean, that's yeah. like as simple as yeah. like, there's this big like influencer. Chris, Han Chris Hansen, is that his name? Where he shows up and he's <laughs> <Yeah>. just like, <laughs> you're going to want to sit down. Yeah. yeah. But guy, what does the guy always so say? So it's, it's, I, I was it's here to uh, protect them. Doug, it's yeah. goob underscore you There he is right there. And so he'll find, and what he does is he basically puts them out there. So he'll find these, these predators you see, look, it says exposing predators, right? And he'll do a whole thing and he'll 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 put their shit on blast. This is where they work, this is where they live, oh, this is their full name. Like beautiful. yes. Like that. It's kind of cool what he does. And I, I found him through our other friend Chris Nagibi and started paying. There's one right there, right? There's a the, the tattoo artist guy right there, exposing predators. So yeah, his his whole page is like around exposing predators or exposing fitness frauds that and people that are scamming people online. Huh. And he and he does it in a pretty cool way. He's also like again really big on uh, like his for Christmas. He did this huge toy drive. I think he drove like thirty thousand dollars worth of toys for kids and stuff like that. So I like what I see so far. Just literally, found you know what guy. I what I and he's, found. And he's strong. You know, he's a strong buff dude. Oh you know, well, so, good. Yeah, good. He <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, lists well, weights. There's you know? a there's this there's these new there's these weird other how guys. he intertwined those, but it's cool. I know yeah. it's a weird combination. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I don't. I, I'm sure. And maybe he'll hear this. I'm sure it'll get back to him. And then maybe we'll talk. I'll find out his story. I don't know his full story of what made him go this direction. I'm I'm guessing. So I've got two passions. 
lifting weights <laughs> and killing pedophiles. <laughs> pedophile. Well, well you're, you're, I wasn't thinking about this until you brought up, that. You brought yeah, up yeah. the vigilante thing, and I'm like, this kind of reminds yeah. me of that. You know what I'm saying? Like he has, like this dude just has this mission to go you, just fuck with all these pedophiles. Have you guys seen I'm, these, I'm here for it. Have you guys yeah. seen these guys online that will one of those head count? You know, yeah. Have you? There's these guys online that will. You know how you get like these telemarketers that are just fraudsters and they'll try to talk you into giving you control of their yeah, yeah. laptop yeah, yeah, or yeah. Mm. they'll lie to you. I, I'm, I'm about this warranty and then they'll steal your money or whatever. There's this guy who's like a master hacker and he plays along. I don't know what his name is. We've got to find him. Oh. He plays along and then he gets control of the desktop of these callers who are like in India or in other countries. And then he tells them who they are. He watches them through their camera. He, and he shuts wasn't down that, the whole operation. Wasn't that on that documentary yes. that we were all watching last uh, year? Oh, yeah, on HBO. Yeah, it was the, the telemarketer one. Yeah, the yeah. telemarketing ones. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, bro, how did you not finish yeah, that? I yeah, they yeah got, I watched that. There's a guy on there that does that. The yeah. way they panic? Oh yeah, it's on the phone. Yeah. Those are yeah amazing, and everybody's just scrambling like you know a bunch of cockroaches like ah <laughs> yeah, they're right. on to us. I yeah. love it. Hey, speaking of uh, scrambling. So this may be a little late, but we got to bring this up because it's one of the weirdest social media stories that I've seen in a long time. The Miami Mall oh, man. incident Yeah, that I don't know if people have heard of this, but I caught it on X. There was this yeah. woman. You sent it to me right away, which I Immediately yeah. sent it to Justin. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this woman that gets on and her, the original video was this woman saying, hey, uh, there's like a hundred cop cars driving to, I don't remember what mall it was in Miami. The original report was that there were teenagers fighting each other with sticks yeah, like and fire Some kind of gang related like firework. But she's display. like, why are there, and there's film of like hundreds of cop cars, just, it looked like hundreds, right? Oh. Rolling up. Cop easily, cars rolling there was, up. There was easily a couple hundred. No power, 20 miles in every direction from the mall. So all power cut out, all internet cut out. The The airport shut down. Mm -hmm. So there was no communication whatsoever. Yeah. And the weird part is zero film from inside this mall. And then the report started to come out. People And they kept getting taken down, but people were writing about it. Yeah, There's these eight to 10 foot tall creatures or beings and people were shooting at them with their sidearms and they would pop in and out of existence and like all this weird so you guys brought this shit. up last week yes uh, has it evolved anymore you just get a few more eyewitness testimonials starting to kind of come out and kind of like uh, backing up what you're saying in terms of them popping in and out and like it was really a weird like they they were terrified like they were like and again you know they could be acting or whatever just like you it's know, just weird trying to get attention but yes. yeah but at the same time oh, you sent me one that had like looked like there was a footage of a portal like it looked like a just a what? it looked yeah. like a, a a light started and then it grew 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 and, and everybody's like, freaking out and then it just kind of exploded and then kind of disappeared and, and they're like yeah. what and, and, there, and everybody one, freaked out you could see everybody running there's video from apartment buildings far away where they had power and they were filming it from their phones and there's one that you can kind of looks like a tall gray like being walking in front of the cop cars or yeah that mom. one's a little that one is too hard to tell it's rough because you could also it looks like a couple people together kind of walking you know, so so it's like, is that a couple people or is that one thing that's really big in comparison to the cop cars? I don't know. Everything is super blurry. And it's just what's weird to me is all the power is out, no internet. And then the, the people who left the mall said that they had to show their phones to law enforcement, that, that their phones weren't working. They had to show them their photos before they could leave. So yeah. what's weird to me is regardless of what happened, you had... Tons of cop cars. They had black That's, helicopters. Honestly, it, it was the attention it got from the authorities that made you be like, "Why? Why all these cops?" But like, no, literally, like they must have like, but no film sent every like cop station in the area there all at once. Yeah, and there's but there's no film. Like you would think that there's something yeah. happening like this, 
Everybody's got a cell phone. Well, you, you don't think, think you would see something. So you don't think that, okay, so uh, easily if a bunch of teenagers were throwing fireworks and lighting off like that could be, the p- people could have thought it was gunshots, sure, right? Inside sure. there. And you don't think that if people thought there was a, active shooters in a mall that it wouldn't attract every cop car within- That's the story. Yeah. That's the story. That's yeah. the story. Uh, that's I just don't know why there's not a single, there's no film, nothing. Nobody has, like everybody in there has a cell phone. Almost everything that happens that's big, you you see video. Yeah. So far, there's, so there's not even film of like kids doing fireworks. Nothing. That's kind uh-uh. of weird. nothing at all. And like I said, all the power and the internet and the airport and helicopters, <laughs> not weird shit. So you get the, all the the conspiracy theorist people like this is like feeds right into <laughs> their uh, like oh my like, god yep, project I had, blue. Beans. I had this date written down yeah. already. I knew yeah. this was gonna happen, you guys. <laughs> Finally, you're seeing it. You know, like we're opening up the portal from hell. It's right here, front. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh great, election year. I didn't uh, want this to be true. Yeah, October surprise. <laughs> Aliens are here. <laughs> Oh my we God. can't elect a president. Anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I could could very. I, honestly, I'm still in like the camp of like there, there could be ways of uh, you know projecting images, of course, and doing things with like drones to, and to all that to mess with your, you know, the public. So yeah. that's that's all on the table still. Yeah, I thought the, the remember the story of the girl that, in the airplane. I thought that evolved recently. Didn't I hear something? Oh, the one is like uh, it was. What did she say, Justin? Just oh, I so this this they're gr- not real or what was she saying? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. But that, yeah. I, something yeah. else just came out about her I'm recently. Telling you that one right there. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah <laughs> that you, motherfucker right there is not real. That's actually really good. That's yeah. Really um, yeah no, people she, did, did use digital uh, like to try to break down her face and said it wasn't her. They're like that's not matching. Yeah yeah. We talked about yeah. that. I'm talking about like recent. That was oh really? There's a yeah, new yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there more. Yeah, there's something that I, I just saw. I, again, I don't get sucked in as cl- easily as you guys do with this stuff. So I saw it come across. Oh, and I'm if like, you oh, want to stay asleep, Adam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> live, live in a, in a hole. Wake up. Yeah. 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 Keep your, your head in the sand. It's happening. You know what I'm saying? There's a war that's happening out there. <laughs> we're in a spiritual battle, you guys. I'm yeah, ready. I'm, I'm armed. <laughs> do you? Th- what's more likely? Do you guys? Th- or what, what? What camp are you in? That there's. Aliens from another planet, or it's interdimensional demons. Interdimensional demons. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> whoa! Easy Fast answer. Then, it's an easy, yeah. It's an yeah. easy answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. If I, I don't know if I believe in either one yet. I'm not sure. I'm I'm, I'm on board. I know people are going to freak out. They're like, "What? We already have all this stuff." Which, that which one would you rather have? I think it's more like. Would you be? Would you be more like if it was an alien? Would you yeah. be more afraid, or if it was an interdimensional demon? Interdimensional to me, d- d- demon sounds <laughs> fucking really scary, bro. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because I'd be way more scared of aliens. Really? Yeah, dude. Way more. Really? really? If there's a demon, you know for sure, like, oh, God, God's cool. He's got my back. If you're a demon, then we're good. Alien, I mean, alien, f- f- do whatever he wants does to Does he, do. though? Are you let, you yeah, know, yeah, but an alien. You might could, have a righteous death. We're, we're an alien. We're, <laughs> okay. If there's, another spe- if there's another species on another planet, we're an alien to them. So what? they're as likely. Yeah, but they to, got here. Does, so they're smarter. Yes. So they evolved that. Yeah. Know. Yeah, I might anal probe. Bro, a uh, <laughs> multi-dimensional demon sounds way worse. Bro. But I feel like I could pray that away. You know what I mean? <laughs> you feel like you can pray you know that away. I feel like it. with an alien, the alien's like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, like the cross or something. No, yeah. stay back. This works. Listen, yeah. if 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 there's if there's aliens, they can get to us. They're smart enough uh, already at that. Yeah. I'm assuming telepathy. I know where like we're at with weapons. Melt your mind. That means their weaponry has to be to our level or beyond. Way beyond. Yeah, way and they have chosen not to destroy us. So to me, they would more likely be curious or like us hmm. than not like us. An interdimensional demon yeah. sounds like it's out to fucking kill me. Or yeah. if it's a demon, its job <laughs> is to bring me to Satan. That does not sound better than, than an alien. Am I am I alone in this, Doug? No, you're not alone. Okay, you're I'm making not. a bit of logical <laughs> sense. I'll be I honest. feel like if you're interdimensional as well, that you can just appear out of nowhere. Yes. You can. Yeah, you have, that's you can. scary. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if I know for sure there's a demon, like I'm cool. I'm like, you ain't get. You can't. Nothing. You can you show up in my closet. I got I the told strong guy. My, my yeah, an alien. I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess, uh, interdimensional (laughs) demon would also, uh, probably make you feel very confident that there's a God. Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to affirm your beliefs. So it would affirm your beliefs. We're having an alien from another outer space. We'd still probably question gods. People still question. So so maybe that part of it, like, well, it's demon might kill me, but at least I know where I'm going. Exactly. (laughs) So, okay. I get where you're coming from, but that's still what's Ever since I was a kid, that was what I always said. Well, when I was a kid, people, we would watch scary stuff and my cousins would be like, oh my God, the spirits and demons. I'd be like, that wouldn't scare me. 
Bigfoot or aliens would scare the shit out of me because I, I'm pretty convinced of the same thing. Huh? So yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think that that's what they saw. In, interdimensional. So there was one guy that said that it was like they kept appearing Planetary. and reappearing. Sorry. And they looked like shadows and you couldn't like you couldn't like people were shooting at them and the bullets were going through. Yeah. Holograms. Yeah. Holograms. Yep. I think I think what's a more likely scenario with all no, I can't speak for these these you know the Miami thing, but as far as like what's came out with the government and that there's these UFOs and all of that, I think it's more likely ourselves that we have stuff that we have top secret and it gets leaked or the wrong people. Yeah, they're see drones. It. I yeah, mean, I I think it's more like drones. or other governments. I think that there's more of that. There are. Our government and including other governments for other countries are all so undercover and black ops. And what makes me think that is like, what? what how long was it? The uh, what was it? The Blackbird or whatever? Oh it was yeah, the stealth bomber. Or oh yeah, no, it wasn't a stealth bomber. It was the Blackbird. It was the Blackbird. Uh, yeah, Sr. I saw. Yeah. I mean, we had I saw that a for chart of every one of those advancements, and it is like that. There's a whole like progression of technology that you see like that was secret, like that's thirty just years, been right? Revealed. It was like, like a like, I think there's the Blackbird, even a, a latest one. Maybe that, you can look it up, Doug. It, Blackbird. I think it's Sr. Seventy one. I think that was invented in the seventies. Yeah. yeah. Like early seventies, so like we were that far, but then we find out about the nineties. Yeah, so like the drink, there was one recently. I think it was on the Drinking Bros uh, pro podcast, but he, they were talking about this plane that was so advanced and it, it literally defied all uh, radar, all satellites, See, like everything. Like it was completely invisible, like in terms of like anybody being able to tell whether and or not. I, and I there. think I think the government allows these people to come forward with these stories and things like that because oh then it, god 1962 bro yes yeah i mean so i, I they think, just withhold all yeah <laughs> all I this learn, knowledge from the public yeah when did we learn about the 90s right it's like 30 years later yeah, dude like hey look what we got so where do you th i mean so so if that's true but they're then, getting and, it from interdimensional and, and, and by demons. The way, so that's, yeah, I agree. Don't forget I mean, from interdimensional demons. That's where we got the technology. <laughs> that's where they're getting all the information from. Come yeah. on, you guys. And and okay, so based on that, Sal, and then you take, if you were to, I, I would love, there's probably some mathematician that could do this. If you factor in Moore's law to that, where we were with technology then, that was 30 years of being, uh, we basically kept under wraps. Where are we at today? We should be exponentially further. Yeah. So based off of that, to me, it's more likely we've got the ability to do a lot of shit that a lot of people don't know about. And the way we keep everybody guessing or thinking it's aliens is by allowing some of this information to get leaked like yeah. this. Do you and, think that we've already hit um, singularity? Like AGI? We could. I wouldn't be surprised. Why would they announce it to the public? They wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't announce it to anybody. No. They would just let it work in a clandestine way. Right. Right? Like our leaders are just whatever they're yeah. just hanging out I, they're not running shit no. i don't think for a second elected officials are running anything and know all the stuff no yeah. way yeah i don't think this so. is yeah. unelected these are not like, they're not george i think they're fall, they everybody's the following algorithms now happening. these are Come bureaucracies that were, they were Come built on. they were built during the especially during the cold war people need to understand like the cold war it was a big threat that the world was going to end it was a real threat so it was like, hey, let's fund these agencies, let's build them, and let's make them operate outside of the realm of mm -hmm. the public, outside of the realm of elected officials. They are their job yeah. is to keep us out of. They've had no accountability, <laughs> Dude, and yeah. when they do, oh, whoops, we've made like six trillion dollars. Just like uh, whoops, that's the other thing. When things, when like trillions of dollars go disappearing from the <laughs> Pentagon, I mean, that's well, not like losing a couple. Who's hundred gonna bucks, go you know? get it? <laughs> like, like, what, like, who's gonna keep funding that? Yeah, you know, like, I, it's just absurdity to me. But you know, the question you might—did you find a picture of what one one trillion dollars would look like oh, in hundred dollar bills? Like, I what? think it's. <laughs> It's, I think you somebody can, sent that. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw that. It's, it's like it, I mean, it's so much money. You can't just you, you can't just lose trillions it's of like dollars. A whole city. And then yeah. your question is, how do they get these elected officials to do what they want? Epstein Island. That's what happens. You got Epstein Island. Boom. We're we're that's connecting the theory. dots right now. Okay, the, that's the I'm aligned with that too. Like I, that to me sounds. Did you it, know just which saying, is why too? So I mean. It, I, I can't wrap my brain around. I said this the off air the other day to you guys. When it's like, well, what, what? How many times did did, did Clinton try, go to the thirty island? something? I haven't been <laughs> anywhere. Like I haven't been anywhere thirty something times. You're right? Yeah. Think like sh even name, L.A. And it's I like, haven't been know, to any of your houses thirty eight. I haven't been anywhere thirty something times. So the fact that this 
president and these people flew of power there. flew there that many times is fucking weird it's bananas yeah weird you, did, yeah did you know that jill saying maxwell right the girl that now she's in jail or whatever that you know was with jeffrey epstein did you know her who her dad was yeah, he was. Uh, he worked for the Mossad. He was Doug. Look up Jill Saint Maxwell's father. Wait, 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 that's a. Where's a trillion? There's at? a trillion dollars right there. Bro, bro. Oh my god! It's like a city block. Bro, that's it's so it's, much, bro, money. and it's stacked to be as high as like. I know. The, <laughs> I know. Uh, and there's, Doug, there's never twenty back. trillion. God, right there. bro, go back to that. That's put that into perspective. There's people that have that much wealth. That's like what? Insane. Okay, what are they spending that money on? <laughs> Did you just say they missed UFOs? out six trillion dollars? How do you spend six trillion dollars? Yeah, uh, you build some badass, crazy shit, dude. Crazy. Stuff. Well, just, what's the what's the most expensive fire? Nobody jet thinks cost? about that stuff, and it drives million? me crazy. No, it's in, I think it's yeah, called hundred million. Yeah, hundred million. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a hundred million. So yeah, yeah. so exp imagine if the most expensive fighter jet is that. Imagine the one that you know can travel in time and shit. <laughs> How oh, fucking expensive that is. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Jelaine Maxwell's father was a media proprietor, spy, and publisher. He was a... Oh, did you see the thing about... He was Mossad agent. Didn't I see you guys, the sisters, and how, like, Jelaine's sister and her, and how they're all tied... Oh, man, I sent this to you Bro, guys a while back. Did that whole watch? thing is so crazy. It's, yeah. It's so crazy. You know what the craziest part is, though, of all of this? The craziest part is, what's his name was going? Who's the physicist in the wheelchair? <laughs> Stephen Hawking. Oh, Stephen Hawking. He went to the island a bunch of times. Oh, my God. The internet's what? been so crazy Bro, with him. And the memes, like, I, I die. Every day I wake up. That's the one thing I look forward to is, like, the memes about Stephen Hawking. There's one. I don't know what movie it's from, but it's, like, uh, it's all Stephen Hawking <laughs> arriving at FC9. And it's a guy in a wheelchair, like, crashing through a window. Yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. What's he gonna do uh, there? <laughs> the internet's one on that. Oh one sure. wow! Yeah, I, I didn't. I wouldn't have guessed that. No, that was that was a shocker. I, I, what's, I, even, what's even scarier is the the those are the people they're letting us know about. Like, how crazy is that? I know. Mm -hmm. Like, if that, that that's who you get to know, it's like, well, what does that mean? We don't get to know. Like, that's I don't know. Well, some people were actually already taken off. They said we can't release this. Oh uh, yeah. Why? Who could it mm. be that we can't know? Yeah, if there's presidents, ex-presidents yeah. on there. Like, who? I, I don't know. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. I saw Oprah was on that list too, huh? Oprah? Yeah. yeah. She's on the list. Oh, You know what on. bummed me out was yeah. uh, Charles Barkley was on there. Oh, was Barkley on there yeah, too? Yeah, that bummed me out. Yeah. So Anthony Kiedis too. It was like, oh, wow. I mean, you have to believe, or at least I would think, because you put yourself in Barkley's or someone's at that level. And everybody who's famous goes there. Like you, like probably a lot of people did go there that didn't know, and maybe that's what they found. They out. thought it was like the Playboy Mansion or something, sure. and then exactly. You know, then they, there, you know, the theory that he that Hugh Hefner was the same way. That Hugh Hefner. Oh, I'm sure he used the Playboy Mansion, or, or it was used as a way to. Well, there was out. a, you know, there was like a tunnel and like yeah. a way to, yeah, escape, and like they, they, they kind of like figure that that might have been a trafficking uh, tunnel. Well, even wow. if it, even if neither Playboy Mansion or that was not created with that intent, it just organically happens to be that. Yeah. You allow crazy shit to happen. Lots of married, important people are coming Film there. It. Yeah, and so yeah, you you just you've got the ultimate. You have the ultimate black we blackmail weapon, even if you didn't even intend for it. To I be mean, that this way, has right? sort of been the mo of, since the dawn of time in, in terms of power, right? Like we see this in Game of Thrones, where it's like you know, the brothels and all this, like you get all the information and dirt and you hold that blackmail against powerful people. It's like, why would that not be a recipe, you know, like going forward with like world leaders? Yeah, it's very clear. It's, it's, it seems very obvious that that Island was used for blackmail. Yeah. It seems very, very obvious. Did you see Cat Williams kind of coming yes, out this year? And yes. like he was calling out uh, Kevin Hart and, and saying he was like a plant, like an industry plant and really? all this stuff. Yeah. He he's said like, he got, he's going off. He said he got offered all kinds of money to be a part of like all their Illuminati bullshit. What? So, yeah. You have to watch it. It's like one of the craziest interviews. It was with uh, Shannon Sharp and, uh, and uh, Cat, Cat Williams. It just yeah. happened. Just happened. How scary would yeah. that be, right? Like you're a hardworking artist. You start to get some success. You're like taking off. Then you get taken into a room or a party and they reveal to you like, hey, here's the deal. You got to do this. Otherwise, we'll destroy you. Like, I would be like, damn it. I wish I didn't know this. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. 
God damn, what am I going to do? Do you think it's like that? I think I think it's more. I think it's less. We're going to destroy you, and it's more. I think people more like gaining access. Yeah, I think it's more. People are people are more enamored yeah, by right? by greed and fame that sure. you don't even need to threaten. Yeah, but it's implied. You know what I mean? It's implied. Like if I don't go along, what's going to happen? Mm. See, you know I don't saying? see. I don't think that because then I think then it would be this. It would people that would would didn't accept it would would speak out more. I think it's more like, hey, you have this opportunity, yeah. and and let me present to you what you can do if you come this way. And if you don't, you don't. And then you it, they don't care that you don't. Yeah. They're just looking for more people to join their side. But you know what I mean? It would be implied like, oh, great. Now I'm not going to get no movie <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to get any record label. Well, you know? I you know. know. Hey, yeah. I wanted to ask you. You said you got off the phone with um, Organifi and they were talking about Shilajit. Big Drew. Yeah. Yeah. They've been. <laughs> so we were talking about. I we knew were, it would crush. I knew. Yeah. It. We were supposed to do like a, a like a photo shoot with the product. It's been and like sold like, out. One, it gets here. It, it's gone here as soon as we get it. And so I said, could you send me more boxes? He's like, we're sold out over here right now. It's like it's it's moved wow. up, almost faster than any product they've ever done before. Wow. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Well, I told I think, you guys when I saw it and I saw that it was legit. I had brought a year. Oh, God. It must have been three, four years ago. I brought legit. up. legit. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. I brought it up years ago that Shilajit, it's one of those compounds used in like aerobatic medicine or whatever that has a lot of data supporting it. There's very, there's not a lot of those that are out there. There's a lot of them with a lot of anecdote, but this has, look it up. If you guys, whoever's watching, listening to this doesn't believe me, look up Shilajit studies. And what you'll find is increased testosterone, increased recovery, improved fertility, hormone balancing, anti-inflammatory effects, all proven- yeah. By studies. And so I always thought, like, why isn't this like a blockbuster? Yeah. And really it was just, he had to make it a tasty gummy. It was crazy. <laughs> it was like, it, it's kind of like when we saw the studies on red light therapy. Yeah. You know, it was like hard to like, really? All these things? Yep. It was like, like it covered so many benefits. I mean, I think that's what it is, is it, it's, it's got so many positive things. It's a, it, what would you quote unquote a, a health supplement, right? Yeah. It would fall yeah. in that category and it tastes good in a gummy. Yeah. It's an, it's and you easy. feel it. It's easy. It's you smart. Take it, take it for a few days or a week. You start to feel like, oh, I feel good. Now, okay, mm -hmm. so, uh, along those lines, is it like, oh, I forget what else you've explained to me before that has a compounding effect the more consistent yes. you are taking yes. it? So it does. Yeah. So it's not- It's, it's not uh, a stimulant. Like you don't take it and be like, whoa, I feel it. Uh, but after a few days or a week, then you start <clears> to just feel better. Kind of like a supplement like ashwagandha where you start to notice it after you take it somewhat consistently. Now that's considered an ad adaptogen. Does yes. this, is this considered? I would put it in the category actually of oh, okay. adaptogen. Okay. I don't know if you could classify it as one, but I would say it feels like one okay. in terms of its effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I got to, um, I'm going to do a little confession here because I brought it up on air and because I want to stay as authentic as possible. And I want to not continue down this, this path or whatever I did. I told everybody I was going to try and go off cannabis and Kratom. And I had a failure this weekend. Oh. Yeah. So. I mean, it take a step depends back. on how you look at it. It's not necessarily a failure. Uh, it was a failure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a failure. Did you, I mean, uh, was it smoking? Was it weed? Was you, was you? Uh, no, it was a, a vape. So, uh, so, yeah. So, Jessica and the kids went out of town. I was alone, which I don't like to be anyway. I hate being alone, which is a whole nother story. And uh, I made sure there was none in the house, right? So, none in the house. Make sure there's none in the house. And, uh, I, fuck man, I went through the closet and I found the old volcano and there was some left in there and I had some. And then by that point, once you go that point, then you're like, well, I might as well keep going. Yeah. And I, I, <laughs> so then I took all the other drugs. So then I ordered, no, no, no. All the, all the So then I ordered some more. It's, you know, it's a shitty feeling, man. I know what this, the, like I, I get this, the whole, it's all psychological, right? But it's such a weird. It is psychological. Battle, so, dude. I'm really, so I'm, I was, I was, I'm yeah. glad you brought it's it up. Really, it's really, it's really weird to admit to, cause, uh, you know, it's like, why can't I just. Yeah. But okay. So, hmm. so I, I, I mean, I, I, I go back and forth on like you know, breaks that I would say I take. Cause I don't, I, I had stopped smoking. What, I don't know how many months ago it was when I shared that on the podcast since then I've smoked. Right. Um, but I don't, I don't, I guess I don't beat myself up. Like I failed. Right. Like, yeah, I had the intention of like, Oh, I want to stop and I don't, I don't want to. And let's see if I don't have to at all sure. or, or whatever. And that was kind of my attitude was like, you know, I really don't want to do this. I, I shared the story about Max. And so that really hit home for me that I'm like, I don't want my son to have that smell around the house. Yeah. I don't want to. And I, I, I want to have the marijuana conversation when he's a teenager, not when he's fucking eight, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So that was what really motivated me to, to go that direction. Now, since then, I've had a handful of times for sure that I, I have, 
And there's some things that I, I just, I really like, I still love about it, you know? And I, and I admit that and I know that. And so where I'm at now, I, I think I have a better balance around where I was. I think I, I think I was out of balance. That was enough for me to kind of wake me up and say, Hey, I'm going to stop doing this. I've, I've now done that, but I don't have this, like I failed yeah. on yeah. myself. Do you beat yourself up? Like, yeah, I do. And yeah. I, I know that's a, that's yeah. a terrible uh, strategy because that can lead, uh, <clears throat> that just leads to more uh, rebellion. Yeah. Just more, like we teach people with that. hundred percent. Yeah. So I know, I mean, I know what, I know, I know what's happening. It's hard to stop. Uh, that process. But I, I say I failed because I haven't proven to myself yet that I can just have nothing for long enough. So mm. it wasn't, what was it, a week or two, two weeks maybe? And mm. so it's like, okay, like what the hell? So now make it to two weeks, bro. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, That's what it. the hell? Yeah. You know, what well, is going you know on? What, you know what was, what I think was really tough for me was I, I remember the, like the first two or three times that I had after I had not for, because I went like two months, I think it was pretty consistent with nothing. And I, when I reintroduced it, I had some of the best nights of sleep I had had in yeah. months. And that was like the really selling, like, oh God, a freaking, yeah. you know, I don't want to need it, which I've proven to myself I can do that. But then it was like, boy, has it, it's a, a useful tool for me. It's especially I recognize when I, we got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. I got a lot of stuff going on on my plate and I'm like super here coming down at night for me sometimes is really, it, it really was tough. the perfect storm for yeah. me. I was home without anybody. I, I felt I was coming down with something. So I had like a mild, I was mildly ill, which makes me depressed anyway. I don't like to be alone anyway. So I'm like sitting there in my own, you know, whatever. And I'm not doing something else to help myself. I'm just sitting there trying to watch TV or whatever. And that's just a bad, uh, just a bad combination i mean I, perfect I, storm i don't know if you're sharing to 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 receive any advice around it but mine would just be uh literally i think you have to have empathy for yourself in the situation i think that um i i think when you put it in the category of it's bad wrong i failed it, again it creates that same relation yeah, i don't i don't i don't have that yeah yeah so it's 100 percent what i'm trying to yeah trying to work on yeah and i think it's just hey I'm like and i and i and i still have that now where i'm like again i'm like hey i, I still still stand by what I said originally with, you know, pulling off of it is like, I don't, you know, so I'm very cautious now about like, Oh, if I go, it's yeah. outside. And it's like, I get oh. the, I get, I get the self shame that people go through when they're trying to fix their diet. Totally I get that same thing. Um, and it's a, uh, it's self-defeating. It's very hard to reverse. So I get that. That's what I'm working on right now. It's like, okay, how do I get myself out of that loop where if I take a step back, it's not, uh, like, you know, I'm going to beat myself up for it for a week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the self-awareness that you have you around it. hug me or something. So, <laughs> I, <I'm, laughs> you know, no. Fuck that. No. <laughs> FaceTime. You totally joking. You got to break the tension what was I somehow. Talk? There was something. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys, did I, I don't know if we shared this on air. There was like that viral uh, uh, comedian that, or the clip that comedian did about the, he went on a um, golf trip with his buddy who just had a, uh, a divorce or broke up with, oh, his, yeah, yeah, broke yeah. up with his girlfriend like that. And the, the wife is like, Hey, how's, how's John? You know what I'm saying? They're like, how should I know? Well, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> did you did you golf with him eighteen holes? Yeah. You didn't ask him what he's doing. Well, it didn't come up. Yeah. yeah. Well, did, didn't they get a divorce? Yeah. yeah. Well, how's he doing? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You talking about? <laughs> he has a new girlfriend. What's her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? That's guys. <laughs> yeah. We just golf. Yeah, yeah. He's got a new driver. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, speaking Brian of, Regan, speaking of driving, like, our trainer uh, course is coming up. It's coming up in what? a couple days. Yeah, it's coming. It's here Monday. Sign up for it. It's mindpumptrainer.com. And our goal is for you to leave with information that you can use immediately to Indeed. improve the success of your clients and your business. These are things that we found to be uh, big rocks that really make a big difference uh, with the trainers that we've worked with. And there's some surprises coming up. Yeah. And what's the uh, link again? Mindpumptrainer.com. Mindpumptrainer.com. And then the shout out was uh, the guy's name is John Dorsey. So shout out to John Dorsey. His uh, Instagram handle is goob underscore U2. Check him out. Hey, look, if you want an on-the-go snack that's natural, not heavily processed, that's high in protein, low in carbs, check out Paleo Valley's Meat Sticks. These are grass-fed meat sticks. They're not dry. They're delicious. And it's a great way to supplement your diet with a snack you could take anywhere. Go check them out. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 15 and get yourself 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Jessica from Oregon. 
Hi, Jessica. How can we help you? Hey, good morning. How is everyone? Good morning. Good. Thank good. You. Um, I'll start with my question and give you a little background. My question is, does a strength training practice, a robust one, eventually lead to a reduction in flexibility, absent any kind of mobility training, yoga, stretching, things like that? Um, for background, I'm 51. I've been strength training for a year. My routine is three to four days a week, full body. I've always been naturally very flexible. I would say before this year, I would do yoga maybe twice a month or something like that. But I, I've done nothing this past year. I've only strength trained. I, I've noticed recently, I just feel less flexible. I feel tighter. And it kind of got me wondering if it's just a natural byproduct of strength training. I think about too, like the guys I know who are all really built, they're really inflexible. And so, I don't know, it just kind of got me thinking about that. I particularly feel tightness in my posterior chain, my lower back. Um, I think the deadlift is probably my least confident lift. I do also have a compression fracture in my lower spine. So, that I'm just kind of mindful of working around that as well. I mean, my goal is aging well. I want to be strong. I want to be flexible. And I'm curious about the need for active muscle stretching to have that goal. And as I continue strength training, like how to optimize for both. What a Good question. Yeah. What a great question. This is a, a complicated question. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a common misunderstanding around strength training and that it makes people muscle tighter. Training. Um, it does, it does not do that, but let's talk about tightness first. Let's examine what's happening. Why does the body get tight in the first place? So the, the central nervous system controls your muscles. It'll tell your muscles to contract or relax. It also controls the extensibility of a muscle, how far or long it allows the muscle to get. Okay. What makes a body part or muscle area tight is your body sensing instability. Mm -hmm or sensing potential danger or weakness, yeah. right? And it's weakness it's now, protective. now here's where it gets complicated. Okay. Weakness can mean that you're strong in one direction and it's disproportionate to another direction, therefore causing instability. To give you an easy example, if I had, let's say that there, I'm going to make up a ratio. Okay. Let's just say there's a ratio of two to 2.5 in terms of strength between the quadriceps and the hamstrings. Okay. That's not the number, but let's just make that up and say that that's the ideal ratio where the body feels stable. It's way more complex than that, but we'll just play with that number right there. And then let's say you work out your legs a lot and your quads and hamstrings get stronger, except your quads get stronger a lot faster than your hamstrings because of the way that you train, maybe the exercises you focus on, the range of motion, whatever. So now that ratio is more like a three to two or three to one. Even though both of them got stronger, the ratio of strength now moves into a range where your body feels unstable. And you see this with sprinters, for example. Hamstring pulls are common in sprinters. Hamstrings on sprinters are way stronger than the average person. But what happens is they get this, this, this power dynamic where there's instability because the power they can generate with one area doesn't necessarily support. It far exceeds it. It far exceeds the stability that is present. So how can we get tighter with strength training? Well, if you've done a lot of the same exercises over and over again, you're not training in different ranges of motion or different planes of movement, you're getting really strong in particular ways, but the stability that's there to support it and the other ranges of motion and the other planes of movement aren't necessarily keeping up. And so what happens is your body starts to limit your range of motion and your movement to keep you in what it considers to be safe. So a bodybuilder who builds lots of muscle with the same, you know, 20 exercises all the time goes to throw a baseball and his stabilizer muscles and his rotator cuff, right? His infraspinatus, supraspinatus, whatever. They can't support the throw. It'll limit his speed or he'll overcome it, throw hard and tear his rotator cuff or twist in the back seat to get something and hurt his low back. And he's like, what the heck? That doesn't make any sense. I'm, I thought I was so strong. So really it's about balance. The body has to feel stable and strong and balance is a part of it. Now, to be very clear, proper strength training is one of the best flexibility tools that exists, mm -hmm. uh, proper being the, the key word, because strength training gives you strength in ranges of motion, whereas just static stretching gives you range of motion, but doesn't give you strength. Mm -hmm. Like a baby- It's useful. Yeah, it's right. So like a baby who's super flexible, no strength, very unstable, right? You put, a, put weight on a baby, a baby's gonna hurt itself, don't do that. Uh, so, so that's what's happening. So it's more complex. So I would look at your workout, identify where the tightness is 
And what's probably happening is you have either lateral stability issues or rotational weakness mm -hmm. or, you, you know, your range of motion has been the same and you're just continuing to add weight without maybe going lateral and rotation are the most common. That's the most common. Yeah. yeah lateral rotation. And then like shortened range of motion on things like squats. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'd say those are probably the three the most big culprits. Yeah. Most common with clients is we, we, we neglect the lateral movement. We neglect rotational movements or we neglect full range of motion and movements like the squat, the overhead press and things like that tend to cause the same issue. Totally. So to give you like another example, um, you know, years ago I trained a, a high level baseball player in high school was actually going to get, uh, he was going to go to a, a D one college. He, was, he threw incredible speed. He'd never done any other sport than baseball, never did his strength training, just played baseball his whole life. His, uh, stepfather hired me to train him. The imbalance between his right and left side were incredible. His body started to develop in that direction. If you do the same exercise all the time with strength training, your body's going to develop in that way. And it's going to start to limit your movement as a result. So I can guess that your workout, you're probably following the big basic lifts, which are great for building muscle, but you're probably now got to the point where you're pretty strong. In fact, I'm looking at your numbers here. You are really strong. You're deadlifting 190 pounds, 170 pound barbell squat. You're bench pressing 105 pounds in a year's worth of training, female. I mean, you're doing, you're only weigh 143 pounds. Yeah, those are great numbers. You're really strong but you're probably now starting to create some instability because the strength is probably in I mean, what do you limited say, movements. What do you say, performance or symmetry or both? I mean, yeah. I mean, I would love to see you go through MAP symmetry Either and MAP performance. I think they're both going to benefit uh, totally. what well, you're seeing. Well, what does your workout look like, Jessica? Like, what do you, what is you, is it all of this ringing a bell? What am I saying? Is, it, is this resonating? Yeah, it's it's completely. I mean, I basically did the same workout. I mean, again, three, four days a week for the first 10 months. I'm on anabolic. I'm doing the advanced yeah. calendar right now. And I really kind of felt like I needed a change. This was a couple months ago. And it just mm. it felt like I I was doing the same thing. And I and I recognize that your yours are similar, but they were different enough. And of course, those those the phases that you move through are yeah. really helpful. I wasn't doing any kind of really rep and and weight variation like you have. So I'm in phase three of anabolic, the advanced calendar right now. Um and like I was just going to do it again, but it really does feel very true that I've basically done the same kind of yeah 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 um, that's all you need exercises for a year yeah. yeah I would go I would go maps symmetry or maps performance next and then follow those two yeah, those two up. would be ideal for you so whichever one which one do you want I'll give you one of those which one do you want performance or I don't symmetry? know enough about the differences Oh, okay. I trust you guys I you know I've got four three four days in the gym easy an hour I, and you've only been strength training for a year yeah well I, let's go performance yeah We'll go performance, follow that up with symmetry. Right. Here's the problem with MAPS Anabolic. Uh, it's, this is going to sound like a commercial. It's so effective <laughs> at building strength and muscle and boosting metabolism that people cycle it over and over. It's the, it's the program that people tend to stick to. Addicted to it, they get yeah. addicted to it, but it's so, uh, it's so focused on one plane. It's like deadlift, squat, yeah. bench, overhead press, row. And it's great for building muscle and strength. But you've, if you get really strong and, and you just stick to those exercises, your lateral stability, I can guarantee you, is lacking. Your rotational stability is lacking. You've got some, some, your, some stability issues now because you've built so much strength in, in this limited scope. So it's definitely time to move forward. This is why we recommend people go MAPS anabolic, MAPS performance. We always recommend people follow up anabolic with performance because of what you're talking about. But great awareness. I yeah. think that I think you've done incredible yeah. already. The gains you've made in a year in strength, and and the fact that you have the awareness of you're starting to pick up and notice these things. But that's exactly why we wrote performance. That was the follow up program for these exact reasons. Our our philosophy or our original core programs were maps anabolic, maps performance, and then maps aesthetic. And in the ideal world, most all general population, if you're just looking for overall strength, mobility, health, longevity. That you, that's the kind of order that almost everybody should really follow. Yes, we have other things to individualize for people and be more specific, but for the general population that's looking for overall like aesthetics as far as body fat reduction, muscle gain, strength, mobility, like that's the pursuit right yeah. there. And I, and I want to be clear, Jessica, you're not going to compromise like fat loss and muscle gain by focusing now on it's not. In fact, you're compromising it now because you're going to start to get really limited by what you're talking about. In fact, if you continue to stick to MAPS Anabolic, it'll start to get to the point where you're going to start to hit 
some some walls and plateaus because your stability is not going to allow you, your instability, I should say, is not going to allow you to continue uh, to progress. So very common issue. And this is why you see big, like the big, you know, bros in the gym and they yeah. look so tight. That's exactly what's happening with them is they, they look at a program like mass performance. They're really strong in one direction. Yeah. They're like, I'm not going to do all, yeah. you know, mobility, like who cares or whatever. By the way, if you did a bunch of static stretching to offset this, you would be doing the wrong thing. Yeah. So I'm glad you called you, you, you got here on it. Yeah. Cause it's the static stretching would temporarily alleviate some of the issues, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't fix the root cause. Yeah. So. Okay, that's super helpful. Sure. I mean, do you have objection to sort of off day yoga once or twice a week? I mean, no, it's, no, like, that's yoga is not be, really be, about the stretching piece. That's just more. No, no, that would complement that. Yeah. What, what, what good, the mistake that the mistake that I think Sal's alluding to is that what people do is they they stu- they they get freak out, they stop the weight training, and then they go yes. over to just doing yoga, and that would be a big mistake. But to add yoga into like mass performance, what a great compliment. In yeah. fact, what you're gonna find, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to you running performance, especially since you like yoga like you'll see what our oh, mo- our it. mobility days are it's like active yoga yeah. so you're moving through these kind of yoga like poses and those are your your every other day so you have strength training days like anabolic has laid out foundational days and then every other day are what we call mobility days which you're going to find are similar to the feeling that you get when you do your yoga okay yeah. I'm excited. Thanks yeah. so much. I, that's great. I really appreciate that. Yeah, you awesome. got it. I appreciate your question. A lot. Yeah, Thank circle you. back with us. I'd love to hear how it goes after you go through the program. Okay. Thanks so much. I'll let you know. Hey, I want to do a quick shout out to Rob Reed. He's one of your coaches and consultants. Oh, yeah. 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 He's in Kentucky. I think I'd sent a question in about the difference in a couple of other programs. And um, he came back with a, did offering a 30 minute assessment and he was great. I kind of was going high on right in a, on a couple of things and he straightened me out and just want to do a shout out for him. Yeah, Rob, awesome. great guy. Rob, all, all right. right. Great job, Thank Rob. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. You got it. I appreciate that question yeah. because it allows us to go in and break down exactly what's happening because that stupid myth continues to exist and it's reinforced by what this people is a observe. Whole podcast. Well, the reason happen. why, right. well, the reason subject. why it's reinforced is because there is some truth in it. That's right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. It re- it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I do feel tighter. You know. Well, yeah, you get really strong in that one direction. You just have to make sure you incorporate all these other moves so that way too you can counterbalance. That imbalance. I mean, great awareness on her part to do this, but then also a, a reminder to the audience that's, you know, maybe came on board in just the last six months or a year and haven't heard the evolution of the MAPS programs. But when we wrote them, we wrote them with that intent. It's like, I don't care what your pursuit is. Most all people in the ideal world, if you were to hire us as trainers, we would run you through that order mm-hmm. yep. so one way or another or some way or another. We would run you through that type of a, a protocol because eventually this is what will happen to anybody and everybody that follows That's right. MAPS Anabolic or all our muscle building programs that are based in the sagittal plane. We'll get You're to it get before that. it becomes a problem. Right. Our next caller is Adam from California. Adam, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how are you guys? Good. good. Where are you at, bro? What's happening? What is that? What was that? Where are you at? Uh, I'm in the captain's barracks. Uh, oh, wow. Because I'm, I'm, on, I'm on duty right now. I, I asked for permission to do like a 15-minute Nice. Oh, break. good deal, man. So, sorry, those are all lockers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no worries. How can we help you, dude? Well, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, I've been listening for quite a while now, so like everything you guys are doing. Um, anyway, I'm uh, 6'2", 225 pounds, 33 years old. I'm a firefighter, but I just promoted. So for the next two years, I'm off the engine, kind of behind a desk. So I just have to plan out my movements more. Um, but my workouts are really consistent. Um, I'm at a place where I don't care so much about the scale, and I just want to sculpt my body. Uh, I want to be stronger and leaner, for sure. Um, and in January, just some backstory, uh, January 23, so about a year ago, I was 278 pounds. Oh, wow. and just had enough. Um, I was out of breath just tying my shoes, my back hurt, my libido was low. Um, I was always the last on our, our hikes, uh, with the firefighters and just wasn't a really good example for the guys that I was leading. Um, so I got serious and I, uh, I got a coach. So thank you guys, because I got him from uh, a shout out. You guys did uh, Braden from look like you left. Okay. Um, so, uh, I got down to 223 um, in October for my wedding. And, uh, uh, I'm super happy with the progress that I made and I just want to keep going. Um, I haven't had the coach since August, so I've kept it all off, uh, for quite a while now. Um, but I just don't know what to do, uh, to get my body fat down and just keep increasing my strength. The 
scale that I have says that my body fat's like 25%. Um, I'm finishing up MAPS power lift, which I just did. Um, and I made the, the max attempts, uh, uh, just because I knew I was coming on here. So, um, <laughs> my new maxes were, uh, 405 for squat, 425 for deadlift, 195 for overhead press strict and, uh, 300 for bench. Wow. Very nice. Dude. Uh, um, yeah. And I, I feel like I did some of it wrong, uh, but just because I was in a, uh, I was in a kind of in a deficit of maintenance for a little bit of it, but then a deficit for most of that. So, um, about 400, 450 calorie deficit. Um, just cause I came back from my honeymoon and I felt like my weight was a little up. So I was like, oh, I'll bring it down a little bit. Which probably wasn't the greatest idea for power lifts, but I do hit at least 10,000 steps a day. My calories are 2450 proteins, 240 carbs, 168 fats, 91. Um, I eat whole foods except for my magic spoon. Thanks again, guys. Um, and the bear bell, uh, protein bars. Um, and, uh, I'm, I'm just looking for guidance on what you guys think I should do next. Um, just to improve my physique and I'm just really excited for it. My second part of the question before we go is 2,900 maintenance calories is kind of where I'm at and it just seems low. I just want to know what you guys thought. Yeah, I would, judging by what you've done before, um, we know, we know Braden in the type of like programming. I know he does. He's got solid programming. It's similar to like our anabolic type of philosophy. It sounds like you would do really well in a slight calorie surplus yep. and a different type of a program. Like let's say performance or strong or like a, a program that is less traditional uh, lifting and and go that direction with a calorie surplus. I think it would serve you really well right now. Yeah. Are you are you like because powerlift is a great program? Are you really stuck on like bench deadlift and squat or like how how different can we take you? Uh. Yeah. I've. Do it old time. Yeah, I'm down yeah. for. I'm honestly, I'm down for whatever. Uh, uh, do uh, I just been doing that. That kind of stayed with the. That was like Braden's uh, kind of program going with that. So, well, I'm down to do whatever. Adam, I'm gonna send you Maps Old Time Strength. Yeah, especially Ooh, for yeah. the work that you do. I know you work behind the desk, but uh, you'll love it. You'll probably recommend it to some of the guys you lead or, or people you lead on your team uh, because the the strength gains on it. Are unconventional and amazing. Like people, you'll love it. And I and I, th I agree with Adam. I think you should go on a reverse diet. I think you should go on a slight surplus. So if yeah. your maintenance is twenty nine, I'd average about three thousand a day. Focus on getting stronger. Slowly bring your calories up throughout the program. Try to gain too much body fat. So if you start to gain body fat, bring it back down. Kind of hover a little bit. And then at the end of the program, when you're done with it, then you can go back on a cut. But we, I want to see your calories a little higher before we cut yeah, you. Yeah, I would love to see you get up to like 3,500 calories yeah. without putting, like, that would be a good goal for this is, can I follow this program? Can I slowly increase getting up to 3,500 calories and not see an increase really in body fat percentage? Just build muscle. Yeah, just building muscle or maintaining your weight while increasing those calories while following a program like that, I think it's going to really, really yeah. serve you. And then we could reverse. And to then a, you could cut. Yeah. Do a mm -hmm. cut with a transition to another program. Hey, shout out to uh 209. You grew up over there or what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm from uh, Turlock. Okay. So I don't know if you guys are familiar I, with the area. I, yeah. I went to Oakdale high school. So, and I had family oh, in Turlock. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I had family over there. Right on. Yep. Born and raised. Oh, so yeah. I, I appreciate that guys. Thank you so much. Super excited to be here. So, uh, well, thanks for everything you guys do. Yeah. Right, Adam, By the yeah. way, when you do the reverse diet and you follow the program, you just expect to just get stronger. You're just going to see your strength. When you see the strength going up and your weight not going up too much on the scale, you know you're on the right track. Oh, awesome. All right, man. Thanks, guys. All right, Thank Adam. you, brother. That was pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, damn, good job so far. He yeah. lost a lot of weight. Oh, no. He's, he's strong incredible. as hell. Well, I mean. I mean, know, that's excellent. Also, you know, shout out to Br Braden. I mean, I know that he's one of the reasons why we found him and liked him is he's younger generation promoting like yeah. the big core lifts and like this mm -hmm. is the this is the way to get. You know, it's so great too, right? A guy who's 270 pounds, you, you think the path to losing the 50 pounds is, oh, cardio yeah, like go crazy. Run and, yeah, yeah, run. No. Cut, it, yeah. No. Instead, Just change the stimulus. Yeah, right? get strong, yeah. lift like power lift, and look how much it served him. And look at his, his numbers are f phenomenal. Dude. Oh, so so he's, so we have studies now that show this. Stre nothing dude, beats strength training when it comes to fat once loss. You, yeah, once you establish that foundational sort of meat and potatoes uh, programming, like I love when somebody gets to get into the arena of the old time. Oh, strength he's going to love that, dude. Those unconventional lifts, you're going to feel so strong and, and, 
especially like doing what he does for work. It's going to play, yeah. you know, so much. This is one of my favorite moves to do with clients. It would be to assess someone like this and, and get an idea of like, okay, he's done great. He's followed this similar type of a protocol. He's in a deficit, like reverse them out and switch up the stimulus completely. Like if you're used to training power lift, maps, anabolic, kind of traditional, mm -hmm. you know, type of lifts, uh, and then switching them over to something like old timey or performance or OCO. Yeah. These, these, programs that are Shocking so off. different yeah it's going to shock the system it's going to be like a whole new novel stimulus so that's going to promote growth while you're also feeding the body more calories than usual hopefully all that gets partitioned over to building this newfound muscle that you're you're stimulating different our next caller is austin from utah awesome what's happening man how can we help you hey uh so i've again thanks for having me on the show i guess again one more time i'm grateful uh, for all you guys do for me, you guys have, you guys have helped me a lot to see that there's more goals than just aesthetic with, with fitness. And I'm, and I'm grateful for that. Thanks. Um, for the past couple of years, I've been training a lot of unilateral. I ran map symmetry several times, uh, because the last time I talked to you, I was, I was asking about a broken leg that had actually grown back stronger than my other leg. And so since then, I see a lot of strength imbalances fixed there. But my question today is, um, since we talked last time, I kind of switched career paths because I just got sick of working at a desk. And uh, I'm a contractor now. I do a lot of activity each day. Um, and I guess I've been working out for the past four years, roughly. And my body's pretty much stayed the exact same. Like I've gained 10 pounds. If anything, I look a little bit fatter. Uh, but I, I've noticed some things like with map symmetry, I've noticed that my imbalances have been fixed and it feels good. But lately I've been feeling really burnt out of working out, um, as many times a day as, or as many times a week as a maps program calls for, you know, even just the two or three times uh, a week that I work out when I do MAPS anabolic, it feels like a little bit too much. Um, and I'm wondering how I can modify these programs because I love running MAPS symmetry. I love MAPS power lift. I love anabolic. I'm wondering how I can modify these programs so that I can have them fit my lifestyle more so that, you know, I mean, right now I'm just focused on, um, on improving the way I feel rather than the way I look because you know, if, if I was focused on the way I look, I would have quit a while ago. And so <laughs> I, uh, I just want to know how I can modify these, these programs because I love symmetry and power lift and I would love to run those, but it's just, it feels like too much volume on any given day. Uh, so do I just r cut it back to only the major lifts Maps or 15. do I Maps split 15. them up? I don't know. Mass 15. And the the slight modification. So MAPS 15 is going to represent like your the power lift style as far as the, those are the big compound lifts that we have you do. Basically, you do two compound lifts a day, uh, every day. That's basically it. Uh, and the way you can modify that to complement some of the things that you appreciate about symmetry is either one, trade out one of the compound lifts for a unilateral movement or on days where you feel good, and you could, and you feel like you could handle a little more volume. Add an exercise in there that is a unilateral movement. So you could, as simple as that. I'd follow Maps 15, the advanced version, pretty much how it's laid out. Um, the days that you feel really good and you can add more, I would add a unilateral movement that you have found has benefited you a lot into the day, or trade out the squats or deadlifts or whatever, you know, uh, bilateral movements in there for a unilateral movement. Yeah. And and I think that'll serve you. You know, if you feel like it's too much, it is. Uh, and you did change your lifestyle dramatically. You went from working at a desk to being a contractor. I'm assuming you're moving a lot more and your job is a lot more physical than it used to be. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. So, and that's why you're feeling, so, you know, we tend to train uh, to the point where this is how much we can tolerate. And then what happens is our lifestyles changes and we keep our training the same. Well, you, you probably were, it was probably the right amount of volume and frequency and, and intensity before, but now your lifestyle is totally different. You're, you're moving way more, you're blue collar. Um, and so that's just now inappropriate. When's the last time you took some time off? From 
working out. Yeah. Um, I've actually been kind of just the, the, the past four weeks, I've literally only been going in to do the repatterning movements and everything. And oh, good. Prime and prime. So and that's, that's exclusively what I've been doing for a month. And how's it feel? Do you feel a little bit better? Uh, or you feel, it, it feels a lot better. Yeah. I can do a workout every day without burning myself out. So you're see, you're on the right track, yeah. dude. Um, Adam's advice is, is, is perfect, but just, just so you know, if you want to follow other programs, you can simply cut the volume way down. So if it, if it asks for three sets, you could do one working set. If there's, you know, three exercises, you could do one of the exercises. You could always do that. And if you have to pick the exercise, typically the first one is the important one, the most important one for the body part. So you're, you're on the right track. I like what you've done for the last four weeks. In fact, so I think if you go from that to MAPS 15 advanced version, I think you're going to start to see some nice results. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. I like I love running all your guys' fun programs. I've been definitely excited to to try old time strength. That's one that I'm excited to try sometime soon. Yeah. And uh I just I I knew that MAPS 15 is what you guys were going to say. <laughs> which yeah. Is great. Yeah. But at the same time it's like I want to know how to modify it these other fun programs so that I can try them all. Cause you, I'm you cut, just <laughs> cut the volume way down for the rest of my life. Yeah. Austin, you just cut the volume way down, dude. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. do that all the time uh, with our programs. I'll do, you know, one set instead of three or two instead of three. I do that all the time. You can do a, you. So you can do this where, and, and this, I mean, God, this is what I kind of do myself. A lot of the time is I love the maps 15 protocol, the advanced version. And then you can intermittently pull from the other programs and say, you know what, today, instead of doing this, you know, squat, I'm going to do this Turkish get up here. Like nothing stops you from pulling or for like from an old time strength movement if that you really like or you want to try is putting that that lift inside the, the protocol, which really is just you're picking two big, big lifts a day. And that's all you're doing for MAPS 20. So you use that philosophy and pull from the other programs that you're curious and you're interested in. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right, awesome. Well, yeah, that's awesome. Sounds good. You got it, man. All right. Okay. Have a good one, guys. Take you it too, easy, brother. Man. We, uh, this is just so common. I do this all the time, even. We forget, we, we know what the right amount of volume and training and, and frequency and sets and exercise is for us at a particular moment, and it feels good, and we're getting stronger. Then things change in our lifestyle. This is a very obvious one, right? Yeah. Desk job to oh, physical job. Complete environment change. Yeah, but it could be it could be as simple as like just more stress, yeah. right? Or something happened, or you got sick and they recover, mm -hmm. or you know, or accumulated stress over time, right? That it was appropriate, but then you did it for so long without taking a break or doing a deload week that then it became too much. So all of it uh, plays a, a role. All of it's you know put in yeah. this in this soup. And you have to consider all of it. That's look what at happened. intensity, volume. You got to look at all these factors yep. that uh, you know you might need to adjust and based off of a, like your current status of of what your environment uh, is kind of demanding of you. Our next caller is Dirk from Ohio. Dirk, what's happening? How you doing, how man? How can I help you, hey, guys? How you doing? Pleasure to be on. Uh, I'm a big Mind Pump fan, and uh, my tribe is probably annoyed at the amount of times they say, "Well, wait, the Mind Pump guys say to do this or that." So. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Right how can we help you? Well, I think you guys have seen my package. Uh, after coming through a pretty devastating uh, eye situation that only affects about one in five million people in the world, uh, I found myself standing on the scale in June of 20, and I was at 306 pounds at about five foot nine. Uh, I always tell everybody I got into fitness after my eye was just fitting this cheeseburger in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> kind of felt like, kind of felt like, you know, hey, I went through the ringer and I'm just going to live life a little bit. And, you know, it wasn't crazy about it, but I also think during the eye, uh, barely ate, uh, lost tons of weight. Just uh, when you're in pain every second of the day, you don't think about eating, yeah. right? So at some point they kind of said, okay, Dirk, you can start working out. Um, I've always was kind of a bro lifter, you know, back, chest, arms. That was it. Uh, notorious for going to the gym and doing arms for an hour on just Saturday. So uh, <laughs> the best thing that ever happened to me was I, I tore my meniscus in like um, October of 20. And a physical therapist friend of mine said, you need to start training your legs. And uh, then listening to you guys and learning about deadlifting. And I'm like, all right, the first time in my life ever, I started deadlifting, working my legs. Uh, I think you've seen some of my stats. I've lost about 70 pounds. Uh, I think when I sent it to you guys, I was still at about 20%, 20.4% body fat. Finally, that got that down to about 19.7. I'm 52 years old. Um, two questions. I have a full distal tear of my right rotator cuff. 
Um, of course, every surgeon I see says fix it. I'll just tell you guys, it hasn't stopped me from doing a lot of things. I'm I'm in the third phase of aesthetic right now. Uh, I've learned to maneuver things a little different when I lift a dumbbell. Um, maybe putting on a suit jacket, I'll feel a little bit. And and third, I've just hit a little plateau at my age. And uh, while I want to add some muscle, which I've done, I'd lose a little muscle to show a little more muscle. Um, just curious your thoughts. Yeah, if it's a full tear, you said? Yeah, it's a full distal tear, they're calling it. Yeah, then you'll need surgery. Otherwise, that the what's torn, that stability is no longer there. Now, here's the deal with stabilizers, uh, even ligaments. Like I, I knew a guy who tore his ACL and yes. never replaced it. And he'd do Same. this, he would do this funny like party trick where he'd sit down and he'd slide his shin out from under his knee. They did that with my MCL. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, and you can get away with it. Like you, obviously you're getting away with it, but you're noticing anytime you need to rotate in a particular way or stabilize in a particular way that it's a problem. So if you don't mind that, I guess you can keep going but it's a full tear and the rotator cuff procedures are pretty damn good now. Um, now if it was like a partial tear and you saw a physical therapist, you got a second opinion. They said, well, we could work on that. The tear will heal, but it's a fully torn and that it ain't coming back unless they go in and reattach it. Now that being said, you're going to want to go in, you're going to want to get the, if you do get the procedure and you're going to want to have really good correctional exercise and physical therapy af afterwards because without that then mm. it's then it's going to be i mean it, it'll be a little bit better but it's not gonna be that much better you're gonna want to have therapy afterwards to correct you know things that are happening and rebuild that strength but a full tear means that that muscle's not able to do anything I'm sure you guys can envision after having four eye surgeries, the last thing I ever did yeah. was <laughs> yeah, surgery. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, sure you're hesitant. And, and you know, that. talking to some people who had it done, and I went down the rabbit hole looking at pages like, boy, you talk to people who had the surgery and they still can't move. Yeah. And, um, mm. Yeah, I, I probably know I'm putting off the inevitable at some point. You know, I quit trying to figure out how to do pull-ups and some things, but um, – yeah, I, it's probably coming. Every surgeon, like I said, I've talked to two different ones. And interesting, you guys will find this. The the second guy is supposed to be one of the best here in the state. And I said, you know, I had the meniscus tear years ago. I had a, took my Achilles and tore it. Now I've got the shoulder. I said, what do you think? Is it, do I need some kind of a joint replacement there? He says, no, how's your sleep? And at that point, I said, my sleep is terrible. And he said, well, that's one of your problems. Yeah. Like yeah, the got, st studies will show. I, Studies show yeah, that I've very that clearly. You guys. Yeah, no, very clearly. In fact, there was a study that uh, showed uh, it was a dramatic increase in injury from lack of sleep, which is pretty crazy. So look, here's the deal. The reason why some people get a surgery, re they'll fix a torn, you know, uh, rotator cuff and they say, oh, it still hurts is you got to re you got to correct the muscle recruitment patterns and you have to strengthen. You can't just reattach something and expect it to work. Okay. And by the way, Doing it when you're you have the momentum that you have and you're training yep. like you are, you're better off now than allowing yourself, let's say, to have a you know six month spell of off the wagon and not eating great, putting on some weight and not having and losing some muscle, and then going, oh man, fuck, my shoulders really bother me. I better go get that done now. You're you're gonna heal faster. You're gonna you're gonna recover better. Uh, you'll get back to things so much quicker if you do it when you're on top of the mountain. Like right now, you've got great momentum. You've made huge progress. You're doing really yeah. good. You almost feel like you don't even necessarily need it. So my opinion would be if you're going to do it, this is the better time to do it when you're feeling like this then versus when it's like a have to do it and you're maybe put on some weight, you lost some muscle, you're not as strong as you are. That's going to only, it's only going to make it that much more difficult to heal the way you want to heal. Yeah, Dirk, Dirk, how long has this been torn for? Uh, it's about a year now that they identified it. Okay. So, so let me explain what will happen. And I wish surgeons, I know some of them do this now, but you know, a long time ago, I trained a lot of surgeons and we would have these conversations and they often don't communicate this with a lot of procedures. If you don't put as much time and energy into the physical therapy afterwards, you're wasting your time with the surgery. Cause look, that muscle is torn. It's disconnected. You reconnect it. Your central nervous system is, doesn't, it doesn't think it's connected. It, it stopped working, right? It stopped activating it. So if you just reconnect it and you go and, and you, oh, it's healed, you go to the gym, you're like, I don't notice anything. Well, that muscle's been turned off. If I tear your bicep and don't do anything with it for a year, your CNS turns it off and learns how to move around yeah. it. You've developed- You've reallocated like, that's those, right. those movement patterns. Well, there's there's also a major difference between the basic six-week therapy they put you in right after that's he what I'm healing saying. Yeah. versus mm -hmm. real true therapy that happens later on after that. Yeah. I mean, I, no matter what, I want to put you in our private forum because I th two of the best PTs I know uh, are in our private forum. And so- 
regard obviously you, you're you don't live in the same state and so you won't be able to necessarily see them but you can consult with them virtually and they're in there and you can communicate with them so if you do decide to go through this process you have some allies uh, with some of our friends that are in there that can be coaching along saying, oh yeah, that's great advice. Let me, or let me give you two things, Dirk, that I think will help you um, make this happen a lot faster. So uh, I think the site, I want to say it's getluna.com if I'm not mm. mistaken. Maybe Doug, you can confirm that. Right. It they are It's a network of, of therapists and they'll come to your house. So this is one of the only companies that does this. It's all covered by insurance. You don't need to get uh, a, another special referral or whatever. If you get physical therapy, you can contact them. Insurance covers it. They'll come to your house, teach you the exercises or whatever. So it's way more convenient. They're really good. So there's that. The second one is there are peptides that can ex dramatically accelerate the healing process post uh, surgery for recovery. Things like BPC-157. Yeah, I was starting to look at the BPC-157 yes. and then yes. seeing what happened with the FDA stuff, I kind of just stopped realizing no. I don't even have access, I guess. You do have access. Go to mphormones.com. They, they still have access. They're working with, um, uh, you know, they're working with compound pharmacies that are continuing to provide these peptides until they're shut down, which they probably won't be, but that's a whole nother story right now. It's just a little fear mongering that's going on, but you go to mphormones.com and you can still get things like BPC-157, thymus and beta. Those are the two best peptides to my knowledge for recovery of tears and injuries and stuff like that. Now they're not going to reattach, it's not going to reattach your rotator cuff. That if it, if it was a partial tear, it would help the healing process. But a full tear means that you got to go in and reattach it. Post surgery, though, those peptides. Incredible. Oh yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. in the animal studies, you're looking at a 30, 40 percent yeah, cut your time. Right, like like like. Well, Sal, maybe maybe I'm saying that wrong. It's connected, but there's a tear in the center of it. Is what they're telling me. Oh okay. So well, it's connected on both ends. But there's a, there's a, I don't know, I think it's a one and a half centimeter tear, at least when I had the MRI a year ago. Oh, he has hope. So then, if so. it's a full, if in they, the middle. yeah, you got to, you got to establish if it's gone yeah, or if there's some connection and, uh, and I would look, I would take your, your, whatever the diagnosis is to a good physical therapist because yeah. A, a certain bring, bring it into the forum. We're going to give you free access to the forum. Get Dr. Brink to and, yeah, give you and, an assessment. And yeah, and talk to Dr. Br Justin Brink inside there and get his opinion. Yeah. A good friend of ours. And if if it's a partial tear, there's still hope for him not to do that. Sure. And yeah, I would but, love to see what BP157 does with some therapy with him. Yeah. 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 But if they're if they're labeling it a full distal tear, uh, yeah, you got to, you got, we got to see what that is. Because if it's torn and that's it, then there's nothing you can do. Yeah. But if there's some connection. As far as what? As far as plateau, where I feel like, you know, I feel like my legs, arms, everything, I just feel like the, the last bit of body fat I'm trying to remove is really torso. And mm -hmm. I see that when I do the uh, the evil scan. Everybody tells me basically it's probably steps in movement, which I, I don't, you know, I don't like any kind of cardio, obviously. But uh, do you guys feel like that's where it's at? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, movement's just well, healthy. Yeah, activity, really, overall. Just to keep track of your steps. Yeah. You know, that's a, a, one way to handle that's that. That's good for health, but it's diet. Yeah, yeah, we didn't dive into the nutrition piece. That's a whole other monster, yeah. right? I mean, obviously, we, we're concerned about the shoulder, and I know that's what we've been talking about this whole time. The, the next question I would have had for you in regards to, like, leaning out would be, you know, do you know where your calories currently are right now? And do you have an idea of, like, how much you are moving as far as how many steps in a day? Like, what's your yeah, activity I, I, I track everything and I'm, I'm at like 2020 calories, 190 grams of protein. I, well, I think when I emailed you guys, I was about 8,000 steps average, but when winter comes here, uh, in Ohio, that always drops. I bet right now I'm, I bet I'm 7,000 probably okay. at best. That's not okay. a problem. It's not the steps. Then if it went from yeah, eight to seven, that's yeah. not a big deal. Your yeah. calories are a bit you low though. Yeah. Your calories are low. Yeah. I would for your size. Yeah. I would, uh, you know, I would do a slow, maybe reverse diet, try and build some strength, but here's the deal. I think you're being limited quite a bit uh, by the shoulder injury with your upper body, at least. That, that's a limiting fact. That's a, that's a major stabilizer. And even though you can modify your form so it doesn't hurt, your body's only going to let you get so strong in certain movements. Which, uh, by the way, Sal, that, I mean, there's uh, the silver lining in there, especially since you admitted earlier that uh, legs were something that you neglected for a really long time there is an opportunity to double and triple down on your leg training because that's where you're going to see some of the biggest muscle gains yeah. since you have the mm -hmm. highest potential there because mm -hmm. they've got the least amount of training for decades now. 
So put a lot of that energy there. Because you're limited to the shoulder and upper body, you are only going to be able to push so much weight. And so instead of getting hung up on that until we solve yeah, the good, shoulder good, issue, good point. is you know really train legs, really get at, yeah. set some goals as far as some of your your big leg movements and get strong as fuck in your legs. And that's where and that right there in, in a in calorie surplus too. By the way, I would like to reverse you out of where you're at. Like if you're around, yeah, we don't want to cut from two thousand. No, I'd, I'd I'd rather see you around 24, 2,500 calories and hitting the legs harder than you ever have. And then let's see what that does as far as speeding the metabolism up and actually leaning you out. Adam, how many days a week do you think I can hit legs at my age? What, what would you say is that number? A lot of that has to do with the intensity that you bring towards it. I think you could handle one to two moderately hard to hard days and then one to two easier light days. Yeah. So it really depends on that. I don't think you could handle three to four intense no. days of training, no, yeah. but you can definitely get after you have a day that's really intense and then two days that are like moderate to light intensity. So that was kind of how I would, you, I would. Do you after. have access to a sled Dirk? Yeah, actually, I started doing sled work after hearing you guys, and I, I absolutely love the sled. I, oh, I do go. my Wonderful. finisher is usually me pushing and pulling a sled. Yeah, Dirk, you could do the sled every day if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what that's one that is. I mean, you can overtrain yeah. on it, but it doesn't damage the body like other exercises. So if you want, you like every workout. You could start with uh, you know two or three sets of pushing the sled at a moderate intensity. So one of my favorite ways to use the sled, especially with the advice I'm giving you right now, is I'm going to have a day that's that's sled free that I'm training hard, like it's in its deadlift, squatting day, Bulgarian split squats, those types of movements. If I and then let's say that let's just say for uh, argument's sake, this is Monday, and then Wednesday I want you to hit legs again. You know, two days later, basically. Depending on how much you overreached on Monday depends on if I'm going to push you towards sled work or like other exercises. So if we went really pretty intense on Monday, I might do a lot of sled work on Wednesday to let you, because that'll give you some re active recovery. Like Sal saying, you're not going to do as much damage. Now, let's say Monday you train really hard, but you're like, man, I didn't really get sore at all. I might get after it again. I might do some lunges or something else, another big, strong movement on, on Wednesday for your legs again. So I'd use the sled as a way to modify your intensity. So it's like, I want to get after legs Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but if I if I got after them too much on Monday and I'm really having a hard time moving around on Wednesday, then I'm going to do something like the sled instead of doing those hard moves again. If I don't feel really sore from it, then I might get after those movements again. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Like Memorial Day, I'll give you, I wanted to do something different. I did a 24 sled pushes down the back of like 275 pounds. I did 24 farmer walks with a 70 pound and a 45 pound kettlebell. And then I did um 24 overhead holds with a 60 pound ball for 24 seconds, 24 times. And, and the next day I was sore, but I wasn't immovable sore. I, I wanted to do something heavy. And as I, you know, listen to you guys, I found another gear that I learned to push, but I also know that, Hey, the next two days, I can't do that back to back. Yeah, to right. Back, that's right. That's right. Exactly. Okay. You got it. Yeah. You're yeah, all, exactly. yeah, yeah. You got it for sure. What, uh, what, what are you following one of our maps programs right now? Yeah, I'm in aesthetic. I'm in the third phase, first week of aesthetic, basically. And um, I did that because honestly, I, I want to look better. I want to be healthy. I'm a, I'm a grandpa now, uh, or a pawpaw, I guess, as they call me. So I, I said my goal is to go to like uh, her third grade luncheon with pawpaw, and kids go, oh my God, that's your grandpa? <laughs> that's, awesome. that's a good goal. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Well, we're going to put you in the forum. I, I think fine. You keep rolling with aesthetic. Increase your calories. Put a so in aesthetic, you pick muscle groups. I don't know what one or two muscle groups you pick to focus on, but let's make it legs. Okay. So make it was it legs. I, every Saturday was legs. For okay, me, good. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, you're on track. Yeah. yeah that's the, so let's increase the calories by good three to 400 calories a day, somewhere in that range. Get in the forum. We'll throw you in the forum. And then uh, stay close to us. You guys us. know that one scares me to that one scares me to death, like everybody else, because I'm afraid I'm going to start putting on weight. But I'll I'll start creeping it up. I'll yeah, start yeah, yeah, that's it. it. You creep it up. Yeah, you'll be all right. Well, guys, you got such a big audience. I'd be remiss if I didn't take one minute just to tell you that uh, anybody out there wearing contact, stay away from water. Because oh. you don't want to deal with you don't want to deal with what I deal with, which was basically a bad splash of water that put a parasite in my eye. And uh, it's called an acanthamoeba keratitis. So uh, if you don't mind me throwing that plug out to everybody in context, I never swam in them. I never showered in them. It was truly a freak accident for wow. me that uh, that changed my life about three years ago. That's so, crazy, man. Uh, wow. That's crazy. Big holler out there by in context. Stay away from water, please. All right. Jeez. Yeah, scare sure. the crap out of everyone. All right, Dirk. <laughs> Thanks, Dirk. Hey, love the show. Appreciate you guys very much. Thank, Thank you, man. Thanks for calling in, man. man. All right. Take care. Man, that's crazy. It's really splash crazy. of water. What do you yeah. say? Like one in one five, five million. Yeah, five that's million.
Bro, there's a parasite. That, act, there's yeah. a parasite. I was talking this off air. There's a parasite that swim up your pee hole. Do you know? Yeah. How? In yeah. like some weird lake. Yeah. yeah. It's like weird, weird rivers it's and shit. The, yeah, Amazon. Yeah. Fucked yeah, up. I'm yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to stay right there. <laughs> I'm staying right here, bro. <laughs> that is it. I like pools. Yeah. That are, you know, you know I, okay, control. so I want, so he, obviously he'll get a chance to listen to this. Dirk, make sure that we get a, a, a clear diagnosis of what's going on because if he does have a partial tear and he actually feels as good as he says he feels, and the, I think BP157 with help. some good rehab yeah. will, will absolutely help. Yeah, I but think he, he needs to talk to somebody who's, uh, who's who rehabs specifically because there are tears that you ain't going to rehab. You know? Right. Because so sure. full tear, yeah, usually means, yeah, you're going to need surgery. There's That's no right. rehab. That's right. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free fitness guides. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 